It has begun. We have a absolutely packed show. The trade deadline, breaking down everything that happened there. Some news and notes around the NFL. Sims got to some film. He has a story that he didn't tell me that I, it's going to kill me, and he can't tell you guys yet. It's not vetted. Sorry. Can't tell you those How are you guys? Yet. I'm just going to let this go. If this is three hours, I'm good with that. Yep, don't worry. However long we don't need. Don't worry about my kids on Halloween. Yeah. Just, yeah, just stay here. I'll just I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. Son is going to be Thanos. Yeah. Daughter is going to be a farmer. Right. Do you get dressed up while they go around? No, I mean, like, two years ago, I think I put, like, a skeleton T-shirt on. Do they use pillowcases anymore? You know. Or are there, like, special custom Halloween bags they like, with side pockets for your cell phone? They actually like, like, yeah, like the plastic, Pumpkin like, jar. stupid things. Yeah, right. There was nothing better than taking a pillowcase off the pillow and throwing it over your back like freaking uh, Johnny, Johnny Appleseed. Apple yeah. We are not, like, our kids are healthy, but I don't, like, oh, you can't eat candy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you can't. Like, we have snacks in the house, and they're allowed to eat them. And yeah, or if I come over, there's candy. Right. It was, so they're not, like, deprived of that. So it's actually funny where the last two years when I was out with them, like, they got candy, and they're like, let's go. I'm good. And I was like, well, that's it. That's all you want? Like, just the one little lantern worth that's, of candy? I literally went on a rant last night. When, when I was a child, we'd play kick the can. <laughs> Flashlight tag. And I was like looking at my phone. I was like, I would never go outside if I was a kid oh, these days. And then my wife buys so much candy. That's the other reason they don't care. Like, we have the best candy at home already. So what, what do they care? Like, Does she get the same types every year? Uh, yeah, she, I, mean, I do not do trick yeah. or treat because no kids coming up to a fifth floor walk up apartment right. in New York City. Mm -hmm. If they did, I would give them a remote control. You should I give guess. them twenty dollars if they do. Really. Yeah, like I would. I would. Hey, well, wait, didn't we bet money but, last week on a game? What we was did. That? We did that tomorrow. tomorrow. What was that game though? I don't even remember. Kansas, Kansas City, City, Denver. Denver. <laughs> <laughs> so this Woo! is in good spirits today. You didn't he, answer the question. Because I got what, to watch film. What, what type which, of candy yeah, do you what get? Yeah, what type of candy? I'm give, I would give out. House? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be giving out Reese's Cups and Snickers. Yeah, Danielle gets King Size, Reese's, Damn. Kit Kats, Twix, Blow Pops, Spree, not Spree, Sweet Tarts. And we know that your dad gives out. Oh, my dad's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I, I bet you my dad spends $10,000 on Halloween candy. Yeah, what's going like, on I'm there I'm not even night? joking. I'm not even joking. Like he, that doesn't make sense. You no. If you saw the crowd that it will be at his house tonight, he might have ten thousand people. That Can come you to teach his house. your dad how to do Instagram stories? I mean, maybe I just had to teach Josh how to teach me how to at somebody yesterday to teach my family how to at somebody because you know my dad and brother are doing this quarterback thing, right? Yes, and. He told me they you weren't can't putting start. the period in front of the at, and they were starting the tweet with the at mention, so, so I, no one sees it. I texted my brother, and he's like, he he laughed, and he's like, oh, and he, and he had a great comedy. He was like, us Sims in the social media, yeah. <laughs> not our strong point, not our strong point. Speaking of social media, if you're questioning whether that's us in the YouTube comments, the Sims and Leftgo account, that is us. People we are, are questioning. Uh, people think it might be fake. I don't oh. know. It's not fake. It's right. real. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Sims and Left Go show yet on YouTube, please do. You will see me pranking the crap out of Chris Sims. Worked out. We had a fake news alert. We had a fake pro football talk page saying you guys that, went all in on that. that Odell Beckham Jr. was traded to the Texans after, as soon as you said that on, on the, the podcast that came out Tuesday, yeah. I texted the producers and I said, let's get them going to the Texans. We were going to do the Panthers, and then I was sitting in the control room during the podcast and you heard me and said the panthers i don't yeah. think that'll happen he asked you if the panthers made sense and right. you were like no and i was like guys we can't do the panthers but he yes. says the texans could happen man i mean but the more impressive thing is that you I, knew i was lying right yes, away yeah yeah I but did. that but then but, I, I was mean, able you to sell it, it with, yes well when you have an alert on your phone and then they pull up uh, a website pro football talk with it on top of there yeah. and then you clicked on it yes. and there was an article that's a new level crap okay yeah you i will me. you know what you're right to that point you not knowing the internet enough right. and not even thinking that photoshop could be a thing yes yeah like mcmanus just went in there and changed the code he downloaded the html and That's he insane. and he recoded the page and then saved what it looked he like. he put one on today when i was down there in that area and said Chris Sims signs with the Bills. I love it. I said, dude, you need to send me that so I can send it to my brother because he'll have like a fucking heart attack. He'd be like, what the fuck? They signed you? <laughs> Not me. Uh, one other one other update. 
We are having people saying, whatever happened to the F the play up stuff? I know. I think people watch the first game are like, man, it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah. But if you have stats, send them to us because we'll talk about them. Are there anyone that sticks out to you right away that, man, they've really been F in the play up this year? I don't know. I just read that Marcus Davenport's going to miss a few weeks yes. of the toe injury. I've been I locked know. in the cave, so I didn't I always forget this. that you don't get alerts on I, your phone. I haven't. Yeah, yeah. And then when I watch film, I just shut it all out for a little while. But And liter- literally, is there a week f- that couldn't be worse for him to get a toe injury than when they're playing the Rams? Whoa. and absolutely need a pass rusher. It just stinks, and he's really been starting to like emerge, like real deal mer- emerge. Like That's where it's disappointing. Damn. Yeah, a month. Toe. Toe. It seems so pointless. Oh, but yet it's the worst. Worse than a high ankle sprain? Mm. It's equally as annoying. Okay. Uh, this toe is really can be really painful. I mean, really wear... isn't the follow-up question which toe? It's gonna it's gonna be the big toe, I would think. Most more times than not, it's the big toe. Yeah, it's it's a the little joint of the of big you. toe. It's, it's going right to the big toe. It's the worst though. I it mean, really I, I would argue that if you hurt that fourth toe, it's tough because I can't bend my fourth toe without bending my pinky toe. You know what I mean? Those are connected somehow. Uh, explain that to me. Why right. are those two toes connected? What do you like, have? Same thing, feet? What the same thing here. About? Like I move my pinky Wait, and my. I, I don't have to do that. Why do you have like an independent contractor? Do I have pinky? double jointed, double jointed fingers. Yes, I do. <laughs> You're really. <bad. laughs> what a weirdo! You can't do that. Big people. toe. Why does it suck? Uh, it's just you know you don't realize that it's first of all you're in a cleat. OK, cleats are not exactly like, you know, LeBron James as far as comfort is concerned. Yeah, it's a little hard. And yeah, your living is digging your cleats into the ground and pushing your 275 pound mm. body to be extremely explosive and then jamming that cleat in the ground to change a direction mm. or doing without whatever else. I mean, big toe injury ended Deion, Kander, Deion Sanders career. For yeah, real? That was it. That's why he had to retire the first time. His toe had gotten so bad at the end in Dallas, he couldn't play anymore. Wow. Yeah. I want to say that I think that when you say cleat, it is my favorite sound. Cleat? But at the same point, I'm also really worried about the microphone getting too much spit on it. Cleat. You, there's, I'm telling you, words that have CL, yeah. you add a CH right in the middle. Cleat. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> say it again. No, no, now he's going to think about it. See that? Think about no, it. I hear it. There's a little <laughs> huh in there. Oh, it's, it's that can five. You say, yeah, that can, you say, can you say crispy, crunchy chicken? Crispy, crunchy chicken. Crispy, crunchy chicken. That's hard. Now there. say cluck, cluck, cluck. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were multiple H's in there. Cluck, cluck, cluck. I love it's it. It's like you with the S's. I, I've been adding S's to what words. What the fuck? Yesterday we did nine takes on the show and you added S's I to every word. I don't get it. <laughs> all right uh one other thing is the other on monday you stole my running back rankings and i almost said runnings backs right there you stole my running back rankings yeah. and what was his top six it went yeah so originally girly, we were gonna do a top Barkley. five we were gonna do, do a top five and me and fentrick were texting yeah and we were like Man, if there's any way that we can get Kamara on the gra- Kamara on the graphic, yeah, because we're tired. We really think that, and it worked. It did th- that if you just put the number six guy on the graphic, people on the internet they don't get as upset little, because right. they just go they look for who's not on the graphic. Right. So your rankings were: Gurley was one, Saquon was two, Kareem Hunt was three, Zeke was Zeke four, four, Gordon, Gordon five, five, Kamara, Kamara was five, which and, is like almost a tie at five. You right, know, but, so but what's you funny is that. is People aren't going to argue where Kamara should be. Just mm-hmm. shouldn't be on. Mm-hmm. But guess what? People are upset at you again. Of course they are. And guess who they're upset about not being in your top six? I mean, I know because he showed me the comment. James Kana. Oh, stats don't lie. And Ryan Shazier even commented. What did Ryan yeah, Shazier so, uh, comment? Ryan Shazier. This just... is the reason why, and we're going to have Jalen Ramsey on as a guest in a little bit. Yeah. Jalen Ramsey is like, I know you guys. And I, I go, who's watching our YouTubes? But really, they're seeing our Instagram stuff right. because we comment all the time about how great Jalen Ramsey is. But apparently, Ryan Shazier has issues with your ranking. So he just wrote, do much disrespectful, where JC, under the Instagram post. On Everybody is saying, where's James Conner? And I'm not going to lie kind of excited for you to crap on james connor right now well i'm not gonna crap on him i mean Uh, he's doing good things but (laughs) at no point am i gonna put him in this class yet all right especially with you know the limited sample size compared to the other guys and i know after i say that comment people are gonna go saquon barkley hey listen everybody james connor's not on the same planet as saquon barkley okay adrian peterson doesn't say the things he says about saquon barkley last week 
Saquon Barkley is one of the greatest specimens to ever come into the sport of football. That's what we're talking about there. So get off that crap right now. And don't tell me stats don't lie. Okay. They lie a lot. They, I don't really give a damn. I mean, Lorenzo Alexander was one of the league leaders in sacks a few years ago. He was not the best pass rusher. Oh, he's such a good pass rusher that they made him an inside linebacker in Buffalo. Oh, mm. yeah, that's what you did. Who was the number one rated quarterback in football last year? Uh, Alex Smith. Right, exactly. Okay, end of discussion. Let's move on. So my only other thing, though, about James Conner yes. is if Saquon's on that planet, yeah. what planet is James Conner on? James, He's on Earth. No, but I mean, what <laughs> other running backs are on his planet? Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, there's, you know... Again, is he better than Joe Mixon? I no, I okay. don't think so. This is going to be really funny. You I ready know. for this? Is right. he better than Aaron Jones? Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Is but, he better than Dalvin Cook? Um. That's right tough. now, I'm going to give him well, that. Yeah, I'm going to give him that. But okay. But like, oh, well, how about Carryon Johnson? He's been phenomenal. He just does amazing stuff on a weekly basis, and he doesn't have Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster and the rest of the Pittsburgh Steelers teams out there. You know, okay, there's just. You know, again, it's, I'd also say that is I Adrian like... Peterson the fifth best running back in the NFL? Are you? Do you guys really think that? No. Like, okay, well, the stats don't lie. He is, guys. He's five. I mean, oh, well, if the stats. Come on, Philip it... Lindsay. How about him? He's in a discussion with Connor. Oh, we're gonna get to him later. Well, so I'm just saying, like, it, again, it's not disrespect. I do take in overall. Yes. Like you, you. I like to take guys who have a little bit more of a sample size. Yes, he is, but he's doing really good things, and I'm not trying to hate on him. I just, I'm just saying, I don't think he's in their class at this time. The thing you said about Adrian Peterson talking about Saquon, right. I feel, is interesting because, yes. and we're going to get into this with Brady talking about Rodgers later. Yeah. But if people don't want to listen to analysts talk about this, yeah. look at what the players are saying about each other because they're on the field with each other. I and mean, they see it exactly. I mean, what did Calais Campbell say? I mean, Calais Campbell, the first game of the year, was like, man, that guy's cut from a different cloth. Like yep. when I hit him, I felt it. I'm uh, also just gonna. Th throw this statistic yeah. out there he has 599 rushing yards yeah okay it's about 600 right 281 of are them are against the browns are against the browns right so nearly half of his rushing yards against the browns and also i'm not making a guy top five if he rushes for 36 yards combined against kansas city and baltimore yeah i i, I because I, none of those other running backs have had a game like that james connor is really good yeah. the offensive system that they're running right now opens up and i would say the best thing he does is catch the ben roethlisberger check downs and make a guy miss or two Really good running back. Right. Just I, not in this world. I, I, I agree. And add to that point, Lefko, what you're saying there, which is spot on about the Browns, one of the worst defenses in football, which is surprising because, of course, I didn't expect that. Yeah. But they don't have a real quality win the whole year. Who are the Steelers? Browns. Bra Browns tie. Falcons. Buccaneers. Bengals. I mean, the Bengals are historically bad on defense. They're about to break the record. I mean, yes. they're on pace. Okay. So, you know, again – Yes, those things are taken to account. Sounded like a shot at Pittsburgh as a whole. Well, I think no. I think Pittsburgh now that they're four and one, four two and one, they were the worst team now, yes. and now all of a sudden they're being overrated. And I see teams going, they're better than the Carolina Panthers. No, they're not. Sorry, they're not. Carolina's quality wins and has played a tougher schedule and I everything. I think that about we that. should adopt Carolina as our new podcast team because man. That Cam Newton video, we just took a clip of our podcast for Monday and put it out, and Panthers fans were like, yes, media people not shitting on our team. I love you guys. I and had it, me yeah, media people from Carolina calling me to be on the radio like instantly. Were you on Philly radio today? I was. Anything good? Uh, You know, just talking golden talking ball. Talking, Perfect. Yeah. Let's talk trades. <laughs> there were five notable trades yesterday. There were some other ones too. But what I've done is I've ranked them from five to one, from least important to most important. Go ahead, Captain Spock. I'm ranking them because I don't know if Sims is going to agree. Good. And I'm tired of asking you to do things, so I'm just going to do things myself. I, I like this. This is good. This is. I moving. told you. This like will it. lead to more arguments. I can't, you know, I can't do it all. I can't always be Jordan. You, you Sometimes literally... you got to be, you know, you got to be Pippin. I'm going to be honest. You can't be Horace current Grant. makeup of Simpson Lefko, <laughs> you're the Steve Kerr. Just knock down the big threes when we need them, all right? Okay, okay. Me and him, this is Luke Longley and Horace Grant getting the rebounds. Number Luke. five. Number five, uh, Ty Montgomery to Baltimore. Baltimore sends back a 2020 seventh round pick. Uh, I don't I don't want to get into the conversation about how the Packers had to do this. Yeah. I've heard it everywhere and no shit. Right. Move on. Right. Baltimore's perspective, you did say they needed a running back. Yes. I don't know if Montgomery's going to be able to wear the 88, but I'd also say... I think he is. 
That's incredible. It is incredible. But I'd also say he joins Javorius Allen and Alex Collins, and I don't know if he's better than those guys anyway, but it's another positionless football player for a team that he's a little bit like Willie Sneed. He's a little, like, they just have now like seven or eight guys that have no great characteristics but do a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think you're right. Uh, we, they needed the upgrade of the position like we talked Is about. Is it an upgrade? I do. I think it's a slight, uh, a slight upgrade. I'm not so going to say it. you take Ty Montgomery over Alex Collins. I do. I think he can make more out of less. Yes, I do. Wow. Yeah, I do. Um, I think he's just a little bit more of an explosive, quicker athlete. Maybe I'm wrong, and we'll really be able to tell yeah. once he gets in the uniform. I'll be able to well, see Montgomery, what he does. Well, Montgomery, people forget, was a first-round athlete right. that fell to the third round with off-the-field issues. Yeah. He was a stud issue. at Stanford. Yes, he was. He's never been as studly as he was at Stanford. He had ankle, foot issues, yeah. I can't remember, his last year in Stanford. And it really – I feel like he never quite got the explosiveness back after that. But – um, I am interested to see that, and I do think it's a slight upgrade for Baltimore. Okay. Yeah. My number four trade at the right. trade deadline. This might surprise you. I'm going Dante Fowler to the Rams. Oh, that does surprise me. Okay. Disagree, uh, disagree, disagree. Nice. So <laughs> um, it is going to be a third-round pick in the upcoming draft yeah. and a fifth-round pick in 2020, yeah. which is goes against my ranking. I mean, there's a lot of value for a guy that really hasn't done anything right. at the third pick in the draft. Yep. The Rams now have seven former first-round picks on their defense. The last three games, I checked out Dante Fowler's snap counts. He's played 22, 26, and 26 snaps. Seems about right. That sounds like what he's going to play with the Rams, too. Maybe a little bit more, maybe in the 40s, yeah, if they're going to really so. start him there. I think he will. I think he will start for them. He has two sacks this year, right. one in week two, the strip of Brady where he also recovered the fumble, which was big towards the end of the game, yep. and last week or the week before last week against Houston. The reason I put it this low is I look at this defensive line and I know what it's going to allow them to do, but mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not going to play this game where just because he was a first round pick four or five years ago, I'm automatically saying he's going to be that guy. Yeah. He's had a lot of off the field issues and I'm not even factoring that into it. Right. I'm ACL just, tear the first practice he ever played in for Jacksonville. I'm just looking at it and going, I don't know what he is. Yeah. I understand that. And I, and the other guys that I'm going to bring up, I know more of who they are, but why are you against me? It's where would you make this compared well, well, to the well, ha ha Clinton Dix's Demarius Thomas's golden Tate's. Where would you have hmm, this? I would probably put it in front of the ha ha Clinton Dix. Okay. Okay. I know that for sure. The Demarius one is debatable. Okay. okay? So you'd have him at two, three. Why Somewhere. is it more important than what I, I'm I thinking? think? I think he's better than what you're giving him credit for. Is he better than what they have? Definitely. Yes, he is. It's the only thing on their team that I look at and go, they need that. That's the only thing I look at their roster and, and go. And when you say that, what is that? An edge rusher. An okay. edge fuck the play up guy. So you, you know, have 10 sacks with Aaron Donald right. leading the NFL. Right. And Dominican Sue's, you know, clogging really good. it up. Brockers is good on the end, but he's a run stopping. He's a defensive tackle that they've put at gotcha. the end, right? So now you have a legitimate guy who can come off the edge. He's very good against the run. The price is steep. I, I understand that. I think, though, you know, they're in this for the long haul with him. I, I, I know that, and we're going to get to that. Right. I mean more him the player. Yeah, I think him the – I know, I'm going to get there. Yeah. But him the player is explosive. It is. He causes more havoc, even when I just watched this Eagles game, okay. than, than you would realize. Like, you know, oh, Carson had a move in the pocket. Oh, that was Dante Fowler that pushed him back. Gotcha. You know, Zach Ertz coming behind the line of scrimmage trying to block him to run in the inside zone where the tight end kicks out the yes. backside. Of Man, Zach Ertz was like, the hell with that. I ain't hitting that guy. My I mean, question with him is yes. – he, we, we're not in the situation where now he's going to a D line with a lot of alpha males and it's going to wake him up. Yeah. The Jaguars traded him because they were not going to sign him because they have so many studs on the defense that yeah. they, they're not going to afford they to pay him. They just drafted a first round defense end and Taven Bryan. But when he goes from a Jacksonville defense yeah. with that energy right. to a Rams defensive line with those guys, is it, is it comfortable for him? I think it is comfortable. I think he's going to like it. I, I I would say the attitude is probably going to be very similar. I mean, that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, Wade Phillips. Uh, I forget the defensive line coach at the Rams, but you know, he's a great guy who's got a great way about him. You know, I think scenery changed. Uh, I think the fact that yeah, Yannick and Gakwe has stolen his thunder there. They're no, they know they're going to keep him. He's mm. the one that's going to get Dante Fowler's money gotcha. next year. Bill Johnson. Uh, Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson is like. 
one of the all-time cool personalities in the NFL, and I've only crossed over them here and there, but I've been on practice fields and watched them yell at that players. That wasn't the guy that else. was talking to you at Rams camp, was it? Uh, no, that was not. That was not. Um, but he's uh, he's he's your ultimate D-line guy. Yeah, where yeah. The guys want to play for him, and he gets the best out of them, and they go pedal to the metal because of him. Yeah, I think this is a good thing for him, and I do think it's a good thing for the Rams. It is interesting, especially when we talk about Marcus Davenport getting hurt. You know, pass rushers are at a premium. They are. At all times. Yes. All right, so you may have convinced me. I had Ha Clinton Dix third. Yeah. Um, Washington gave up a fourth-round pick in this year's draft. Mm -hmm. By the way, a lot of these guys that are on short-term deals, if they don't sign and get big money elsewhere, the team will get a compensatory pick back. Now, the thing is, and the reason a lot of these teams are trading, they want their pick now. Yeah. That compensatory pick does not come until 2020. It doesn't always happen either. And, because and you're, not it, you're not guaranteed a compensatory exactly pick. Exactly right. You're not guaranteed it. Uh, the reason I had him third is I look at the Washington defense, and yep. I see that they're second rated in run, and I see that they're in the teens when it comes to defending the pass. Yep. And I'm not saying that HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix is something special. Now, PFF does. Ha, ha Clinton Dix is the third rated safety on PFF and DJ Swearinger is the second rated safety in PFF. Before we even get into that, how inaccurate slash accurate is that? Yeah. Uh, too much is made in those things like, Oh, okay. He got a positive on this play. Oh, he was the deep safety and he backpedaled and did his job. Joe plus got a plus on that play. Mm. Great. I don't really care. It's about difference making plays. It's about, you know what you're being asked to do yes. on a down. So just because you're not blowing your assignment doesn't mean you're doing great things on the football field. The reason I I gave this the three though is I think that Ha, -ha Clinton Dix and Swearinger their makeup makes a lot of sense together. Sure. It's another Alabama guy on this defense, yep. which is hilarious is at hilarious. this point you're that right. they're the entire Alabama Crimson Tide. <laughs> right. Because I'm so offended by their team, I might just call them the Washington Tide, just because at this point <laughs> it's practically color. accurate. Right. And it's another piece for Minuski. Sure. Where I looked at his defense and went, you know what? Nicholson or whoever was back there. Yeah. This is another piece for a really good coordinator who I would put him ahead of Mike Pettin that might be able to use it. My question for you is, yeah. where is Ha Ha Clinton Dix? Because just like Dante Fowler, yeah. I don't look at Ha Ha Clinton Dix as a former first round pick. No, I, I, I look at him as a above average safety. Yeah, I, I think that's really what he is. I think I have more hope for Fowler being something than I do Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Ha Ha Clinton Dix is underwhelming to me. Not that he's a bad he's not a bad player and I'm not trying to spread hate anyway in that in that way but he doesn't pop off the screen to me um, and doesn't do anything extraordinary yeah he's he hasn't lived up to where he was drafted in the first round um, he is an improvement for the Redskins though don't get that messed that's, up yeah yeah and they needed it so that's a good thing too and you know what I'm excited more about with that trade is what are Green Bay gonna do? So Josh Jones, Josh Jackson, Josh Jones. I would think because Josh, you Jackson, think Josh Jackson, this could be the official been, move of you know, Josh Jackson to safety. That's where he should be. He can't play in games like last week, like we but said. His ball skills are phenomenal, and he will tackle right. So he is. That's where he is made for me. And so the Ha Ha Clinton Dix trade to your mind is paving the way for Josh Jackson to transition to safety, or Josh Jones, who we and two you years ago, too. like right, he's got he's freakish athlete. And, and I who's think the other safety that they pair him with? Oh, they got the Jermaine. Um, um, he's third number thirty five. I'm blanking. It's uh, yeah, uh, gotcha. you gonna look it up? Yep. Yeah, I, I I can't think of every name in the in the world. Right yeah, off but the bat. it's interesting but, for yes. a Packers team that's still looking Jermaine to make a Whitehead. playoff. Jermaine run. Whitehead, exactly right. It's interesting for a Packers team that thinks they could be a playoff contender to yes. trade away a guy. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it is interesting, and I think it's just uh, you know again what plays into these decisions is the team just go, he's going to be a free agent. Let's get something for him now. Mm. We're not going to pay him. So let's do it. Let's well, make for the my deal. number one and my number two, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because there was a guy beneath them that they were going, I want to give that person more time. Yes. For this one, I just wasn't sure. And you saying Josh Jackson could be the safety there is very interesting. Yes. My number two, Demarius Thomas to the Houston Texans. Uh, Houston gave up a fourth-round pick. 
Uh, my first question when I was looking at this was Kentrell Bryce, the other safety, and gotcha. That's, yep. Was okay. Hopkins, Demarius, and I'm going to say Kiki Kati yeah. is the other guy there. I know a lot of people are talking about Sammy Coates, but Kiki was the one getting all of the reps. Yes. And I looked up there 40 times. Demarius was a four three eight. He's not a four three eight anymore. Not He's anymore. probably a four four six. Right. Uh, Kiki Kati was a four four three. Good speed, but they're replacing Will Fuller who was the 432. Oh, yes. And I went and looked and it's been very well documented about how Deshaun Watson has done with and without Will Fuller in the lineup. Uh. With Will Fuller in the lineup compared to without, 117 more yards per game, 2.7 more yards per pass attempt and 1.5 more touchdowns per game. 2.5 mm. to 1 without Will Fuller. His and in the fantasy world it's like super drastic. I bet. When I watch the Texans game, mm -hmm. there's always the one Will Fuller pass that either takes the soul out of the defense or completely changes the way that defense has to play them the rest of the game because of fear. We yeah. saw it against Miami. Yes. That was the kill shot. Yeah. Was Will Fuller deep. And mm -hmm. the fact that he tore his ACL on like a late game the, up 20 is such I a know. killer. Or the DeAndre Hopkins when he's wide open and he ran in the end zone. And it was all because of Will, Will Fuller. Will Fuller ran a post That's what I was saying. Three guys went with him. But the Will right. Fuller touchdown allowed the Hopkins play a little exactly. bit later to open up. Because they went, there's that guy again. Right. Demarius Thomas, can he be that guy? He he can not to the degree Will Fuller. I mean, you're spot on about Will Fuller. It's it's a it's such a he has an elite trait. He does. It's disappointing. It really is. It's like a but Deshaun Jackson. Yes. So it just stinks that way. Um, can Demarius but yes, Thomas? Demarius fear? can still do that. He can still run by people. He is, and he's got more of a physical presence with some of the other routes that he'll run than a Will Fuller. Sure. You know, I don't want Will Fuller running in cuts and not things over the middle or doing that. He's not going to break tackles. No, I'm worried he's going to get jammed and then the other guy's going to pick him up. Yeah, right, right. So those, uh, yes, they needed to do this, the Houston Texans. Um, you know, also, Demarius has been in this system a little already. That's the good thing because Josh McDaniels drafted him, so he has some familiarity. It's not going to take too long. And, yes, they. I like this move by them. It had to be done. So it was a good job by Houston. Yes. And, um, yeah, he's not going to be Will Fuller, though. The Broncos totally get it from their perspective. Yeah. They've been talking about this for a while, and Cortland Sutton needs to be on the field more. Definitely. Because I he's, would argue that Cortland Sutton is already more impressive than Demarius Thomas right now. Yeah, I don't even – that's not even a question. When I watch Denver film every week – I go, I always come away going, damn, this Cortland Sutton, I mean, he can run by you. He can jump over you. He's He pops on film. How how much of a playoff push does this help with Demarius Thomas? Well, I think there's – Like you're saying it's necessary. They're a, they're a playoff caliber football team, but their offense never is a blow you away. Oh, I never come away going, whoa, those are some – that was an amazing attack. You know, they do it with, you know – Good running game, taking a few shots. Deshaun Watson, please make a few plays. And then our defense is going to mess a whole lot of crap up on the other side of the football. That's the yes. style of play they want to play. And that's what stinks because Phil Fuller fit exactly what they want to do. Yes. And Demarius can do that to a degree. He can. He's just not going to be quite as scary or dangerous to opposing defense. Yeah, my thing with Demarius is he's definitely had banged up knees. Many yes. people call them degenerative. Yeah. He drops the ball a lot. He has. And I've heard of people saying that like tired legs can lead to drop balls definitely. later in your career. Definitely. But I will also say he has not played with a quarterback like this in about five years. You're right. Since I mean, Peyton's all of the nonsense they've year. had. Right. And, and I'm not uh, – Case Keenum is, in, is a good quarterback. Yeah. But the Simeons, the end of Peyton Manning, sure. he probably hasn't seen a ball Osweiler. like he's going to see. He, he's going to go to Houston practice today, and he's going to be like, holy crap. Yeah, I know. He better, it, I'm, I'm curious if the better ball leads to more drops or less drops. Always less drops. That's what I'm thinking. Always. Because okay. the tighter spiral. Yeah, yeah. Deshaun just throws such a catchable. It's, you know, I, I know I wrote in my notes. It's just, it's pure every time. Every time I just go, oh, it's beautiful. Oh. Like a feather. It, it really is. It just floats through the, through the air. Exactly right. And the number one most impactful trade of the deadline. Fly, Eagles, fly. It is not a homer pick. It is just Golden Tate to the Eagles. They yeah. gave back a third round pick. Uh, I'm going to break down some statistics. Break it Because down. I looked Left into go. it. Last year. The Eagles were second in the NFL in third down percentage. Mm -hmm. Remember, I said this before the year. One of the reasons I had the Eagles falling back was they were absurd on third down. 
It was historic, and it wasn't going to continue. This year, they're 13th. Yeah. If you took away last Sunday for the Eagles, they go from 41 percent, excuse me, 44 percent this year to 39 percent. They had a really good day on third down. Before that, that's how bad it was. Also, red zone touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Last year, the Eagles were second in the in the possessions that went to the red zone ended a touchdown. This year, they're seventeenth. Yeah, Golden Tate is like has three red zone touchdowns. It's one of his things. Yeah. Also, Tate has the most. He had the most touchdowns and targets for Detroit in the red zone. Third downs that led to first downs. Ertz six, Alshon eight, Golden Tate ten. Like the great stats, left. That's what you're looking Keep for. Going. Third and seven or more that led to first down. Mm-hmm. Jordan Matthews has three. And they were all in that one game. Golden Tate has three. So Golden Tate has more long third downs than anyone on the Eagles. Yak. Golden Tate is the 12th most yak in the NFL. He's the second highest receiver. All the other ones on that list are running backs and tight ends. Interesting. Makes sense because they're smaller passes. Right, yeah. The only guy ahead of them, Albert Wilson. Huh. who I would say probably 80% of his yak was in that one game against Chicago. Yeah, he had a few like that, right? No one – Wentz has gotten less yak from his receivers than Sam Darnold. Yeah. And Sam Darnold, half of his receiving core is on IR right now. Right. So he's 21st in the NFL. If you really think about the Eagles' offense, Alshon is a catch and get tackled. Ertz is a catch and get tackled. Nelson Aguilar is the only guy catch that's going to break a, a tackle. Yards. But yeah. I believe that Nelson Aguilar is a catch and theatrically get tackled. Right. Like he spins out and then does a thing and then gets tackled one yard later. Right. This is the only guy that they have that's going to make a man miss and go. Yeah. Which the, everyone's going, they think they needed a deep guy or – a guy that could take something and go deep. Yeah. And I think that's what's really opening yep. it up there. Yep. And what Howie Roseman has done and said is what gets me a lot of confidence. What he's done, the last three trades, a fifth-round pick for Michael Bennett, a fourth-round pick for Jay Ajayi, a third-round pick for Golden Tate. Mm-hmm. I'm even going to go back, a fifth-round pick for Darren Sproles. Mm. And this is the quote he said. Everyone's talking about... It's so funny to me, the quotes that people look at and, and think are great. Is it Howie similar wrote, to what I said to you yesterday when you were texting your friends or whatever? Well, no, I'm not sure what you said. Oh, but you texted your friends about what I said. Well, my thing was just about the notion of trading. Oh, sorry. Everyone's sorry, sorry. looking at the quote where he says, you got to keep your foot on the gas. Oh, yeah, right. Whatever. Right. His quote, we're not trying to win trades. We're trying to get really good players. Mm-hmm. That's a notion that I feel like everyone deals with, even with their fantasy team. They're always going, I want to win the trade. It's not about that. You're going to have to give up something. We are in the Super Bowl window. You need to get the players to win you the Super Bowl. A third round pick at the end of the first round next year is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Most of those guys turn into special teams players. It's about getting good players. And I would say that of the the trades here, Les Snead with the Rams making a move, Howie Roseman, Golden Tate, and Brian Gain down there in Houston doing what they need to do in a rookie quarterback window. Goff, Wentz, Watson. Trade those middle round picks, get guys that can help you now, and maximize the window. I think it was a genius trade. I have no issue with it. Absolutely not. I mean, uh, Howie Roseman, he's a trendsetter. He's he's on the next level, like, with some of this stuff. He's... He's blowing football away. Same thing with, you know, uh, Les Snead out in the Rams. Like, yeah, I can't believe they traded for Sue. Yeah, I can't stop, believe they traded stop for Tlaib. Stop all this crap. Like you've always said, like, stop all this crap that, oh, it's a third-round pick. Like, who gives a crap? There's so many third-round busts, first-round busts. You don't know what it's going to be. So um, just – like you made all the the great points and those were great stats. They really were because it's they're third all, down red zone and yak. They're all, they're only going to help what I'm about to say. Really, I mean, we've been saying for three weeks it's it's too much work for the Philadelphia offense. It's Carson Wentz having to make amazing throws, hang in the pocket. It's why you won the game the other day. It's yeah. the only reason you won the game yeah. because he's amazing. It's just you're not going to beat the best teams of football that way. Last year. You know, third down percentage, the touchdown things you talk about. Well, they were good at that for one reason. That was really one reason. I'll tell you why. 
And the, the biggest the RPO re- swept the, the cu- six and 20. That's where I'm going to tell you six and 20 last year. You were the sixth best running offense in football this year, the 20th. Yep. You're not going to be able to dominate in the run game. Not with kind of the injuries and the mismatch of offensive linemen. You've had to deal with. There just hasn't been that continuity. And Corey to depend Clement on. hasn't been that guy. That right. Maybe they Jay thought Ajayi he got hurt. Sproles so, has missed the exactly. whole year. So they, I think Roseman and, and Peterson realized like, no, we're going to have to win it with old number 11's arm this year. Yeah. It's, it's the way it's going to have to be. And the pass, the short passes to Tate can be the uh, the part of the running game. Yeah, exactly right. And he's explosive as hell. He oh, is dude. our kind of guy where we always go, he is a wide receiver in a running back's body. Yes. Arm tackles don't take Golden Tate down. His acceleration off the line of scrimmage. He's going to be able to do Tyreek Hill type of things and speed sweeps. If you guys want to start stealing some plays from Kansas yes. City Chiefs. But he's all also going to be able to catch slants and break an arm tackle and get 20 yards and they don't have or that guy they don't have that guy he is i know every, I, I and i know your friends were saying this and then i continued to yeah, hear my, this just my, my friends in one of my group chats were talking he's about the how, same player as aguilar no yeah. he's not he's a step up of a notch of a human being in aguilar and that's not a disrespect to him but just as a, a notch of a human notch being. notch of a human being put that in our uh dictionary yes, dictionary right but he is just as a physical specimen. He's power, explosive, acceleration, yeah. and that's what he's going to bring to the table. And I would argue he's the best wide receiver celebrator in the NFL. He is. He's a kind of guy that you put on a team that's trying to make a championship run. Right. Surprise, surprise. Michael Bennett's got a ring. Chris Long has a ring. They had, he's another guy with a right. Super Bowl ring that knows what it takes and – I know in that first game against Dallas, when he comes back after this bye, they bring him in on the bye, yeah. so he's got a whole week to adjust. Right. He already it's not going to be that hard either, just so you know. He's been in Daryl Bevel's offense up in – it's the West Coast offense. It'll come very quick to him. He just hung up like 160 and two touchdowns against Dallas this season. Right. That, was an, that game should show everybody itself. But, I mean, Golden Tate, the first time he gets into the end zone after breaking a tackle and does a backflip in the end yeah. zone and then does a celebration – the team is juiced. Right. Juiced. Yeah, I agreed. I also like the fact that, you know, again, he's better than Aguilar, but they can both do the same thing. So then you don't get a beat on what people do. It's like the Robert Woods, Brandon Cooks thing. Like, yeah, Brandon Cooks is better than Robert Woods, but not a whole lot. And they all can do this. There's no weakness to their games. So it's like Thielen and Diggs. It's the same kind of thing. So you just go, man, I don't know. You know, some teams have, this is Deshaun Jackson. He runs deep. Yes. This is Mike Evans, and he runs deep in cuts. Oh, okay, that's what they do. You're not going to know or have a beat on which guy is going to do which, and I think that's part of the beauty of it, too. 100%. Yep. I, I think it's... And they're in this for the long haul. They're going to sign. They're going to see Golden Tate for three weeks, and they're going to go, it's not going to cost a lot to keep Golden Tate for another two know. or three years. You don't think he's going to want... I think he wants a lot of money. He got five years, 31, when he was in his prime. He's not going to be able to demand more now at 31. He's years. in year nine right now. Yeah, I just, went back and watched our interview with him at the Super Bowl. Yeah. And he's a cool dude. He spent about 40 seconds talking about the Patriot way, which is really funny if he went to the Patriots talking about how they do everything right. They're so disciplined, blah, 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 blah. And then he said, I need another ring. I need another ring. He goes, my left arm is bringing me down and my right. right arm. If you remember that. Right. And I, he's, it's just another injection of right. energy. Howie Roseman is a ball. That and Dante Fowler, just to get back to that, cause I didn't finish that too. is just that I think they're, they gave a third and a fifth cause they see potential in Dante Fowler and they're going to know within the first three weeks, if they want this guy long-term, mm. and they're going to dangle a contract out for, hey, you tore your ACL. Hey, you haven't lived up to your expectations. Here's, we can get you for some $20 guaranteed, million for four years. Here's some guaranteed money. You sure you want to leave that out and gamble and not getting hurt in the playoffs in the end and of the who season? who knows what free agency is going to be like. Exactly right, because if you don't blow it out in the Boy, end of the season. Boy, don't you want to so play with Donald I think that's what they're going to do. Right? Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, teams that uh, any, anyone that you're surprised didn't make any trades. Of course, the Patriots. I mean, that's the number one. I just. Do you thought, think there's any chance that Bob Quinn was like, I just don't want to give Golden Tate to the Patriots? <laughs> uh, yeah, I could. Th- I could see that. I could. I and that could Elway that. was like, I'm not giving Demarius I, Thomas I, to I the Patriots. Could, I could see that too. I could. I I would be that way. I mean, unless they just you would ask, do that. Yeah, unless they just blew me out. Like, if it was apples to apples, I'd be like, eh, fuck New England. Yeah, here you go, Houston. Yeah, yeah, I, I would. I'm I'd just, be surprised. I, I talked about it for two weeks. You're a competitor. You're sick of them. You're yeah. a competitor. The hell with them. Do you also believe that Amari Cooper going for a first rounder ruined the trade market? 
Uh, I don't believe it ruined it. I, I just also want to say really quickly, Cooper's 24, Tate's 31, yes, Demarius right. is 30. So right. I understand why he cost more. Exactly. But High-end th- ceiling is better with Cooper. But there's also more questions with Cooper than Golden Tate. So that's the only thing I would fight back against that notion. Mm. There's a lot of unproven things that I need to see with Amari Cooper. Golden Tate, I know what I'm getting, and that's that's it. I texted Golden Tate last night, and it had a lot of curse words Stalker in it. Stalker alert. Stalker alert. And I was alert. just like, fuck yeah, you're on the champions. And he was like, ha, ha, ha. He was like, man, I'm excited. I'm going to get in there, blah, blah, blah. All right, and then come on the podcast next Wednesday. Listen. Can I you am do not, something now, all of a sudden, now, now listen, I'm the booking producer. Yeah, I Guess mean, yes, Booker, about Adam time. Lefko. It's about time. Chris has been the booker for three years. So <laughs> so both of you missed that that was sarcasm. Yeah, well, we okay. knew it. Yeah, but still, get it I done. I got it. Get okay. it done. Just get it done. Tell him to come here, too. Did I don't want him on the Did you hear phone. the game this weekend that it's going to be – I mean, there is a matchup at quarterback this weekend that I think is so tailor-made for our show – that we have talked about this for four weekend years. This has a lot of fun games. But. It does. But to me, nothing really encapsulates what we're going to witness from Hold the quarterback on. Let position. Me, let, me, who are, let me just say, are you going sarcastic Raiders Niners right well, now? Well, I mean, I was going to say Brock Osweiler, Sam Darnold. <laughs> but no, it's Brady Rogers, oh, yeah. And we have to talk about it. We don't often look ahead at the games, but I think Brady and Rogers is one of those things. Everyone's talking about the GOAT. I'm actually very surprised that so much of the content coming out this week is more pro Rogers than pro Brady. Hmm. I'm seeing a lot of people going, what if Rogers played with Belichick? And usually I feel like you're right. I have feel like there's I, I feel like the pendulum has swung a little bit like and I think we should take credit for it, really. Okay, fine. That that we at least have opened people's eyes that this is a very real discussion and get over the rings thing. When Michael Jordan says it's a discussion, I guess like you're he right. legitimized that, that, it. He you're, said you're probably it's you're, a goat debate. You think the NBC Michael Jordan? You're video. probably right. I mean, you're it, right. It adds to it certainly. We've been saying it, and by we, I mean the two of you uh, have been saying it for a long time. But when Michael Jordan starts the week by saying it's a debate about the That's greatest of all time, that yeah. legitimizes it for people. Of oh, okay, maybe it is a debate. You're right. There's been a ton of quotes that have come out recently that we've always wanted Brady to say yeah. about Rodgers. Uh, the Ian O'Connor article, of course, where he said, I'm really a product of what I've been around, who I was coached by, what I played against in the era I played in. I appreciate Brady's self-awareness. Uh, What's awesome about Brady? It's like, again, it really is. It's yeah, what, you know what? It's what I love about Tom That's Brady. That's actually something. Well, Rodgers is complimentary of people, he, he too. He is, but Brady... Brady has the hardware and all that to like kind of he could shove it in everybody's face and be like he could he could end that discussion almost or or find ways to finagle or out of it. Or he could do his corny. I plead the fifth. or something like that, right? But he he's that's what I I appreciate that about Tom Brady. I really do. I appreciate everything about Tom Brady. Quote from uh, Aaron Rodgers is uh, college coach. Juco, it would be limitless what Aaron would have done with Belichick in that organization. He has all the intangibles, Brady, and has better arm talent, better athlete. I think Aaron would have won four or five championships, too. You agree with that? You think he would have won seven? I mean, I think he might have been in a whole more Super Bowls. I don't think they would have lost maybe some of the AFC championship games they lost. I mean, I'm just, that's what kind of talent I think Aaron, I think Aaron Rodgers is like once in a lifetime type talent. That's how special I think he is. Just how we rattled off stats yesterday. You know, the thing that I always come back to forget, I, we think he's the most physically gifted guy ever, but the quickest of 40,000, the quickest of 300 TDs, you're really not going to ever know a marquee name that played receiver or tight end for him in any shape or fashion. And then the interception to touchdown ratio. He's the greatest gunslinger in the history of the sport, but yet he he takes care of the ball better than the greatest game managers in the history of the sport. Just to hammer home that touchdown to interception ratio. Yeah. All time. The number three touchdown to interception ratio guy is Russell Wilson. Yeah. 2.95. Right. The number two is Tom Brady, 3.02. So seven one hundredths better than number three. And really below that, you know, you go down 0.5, you go down 0.6. Aaron Rodgers is 4.13. The margin between two and three is seven one hundredths. The margin between Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady is one point one one. Like it's so, it's it's insane. It's insane. That's that's all I've been trying to say to people. And Tom Brady is awesome. First of all, let me just say it like this: my favorite athlete 
outside of football and maybe like, okay, no Michael Jordan, LeBron James is Derek Jeter. Okay. And Derek Jeter is awesome. Like awesome. The clutchest guy I've ever seen. And that's where Brady is awesome. That's where I look at Brady. Brady's physical ability gets undervalued. He, yeah, okay, he looks gawky and like Bambi sometimes when he runs for a first down or tries to catch the quarterback pass in the Super Bowl. But his sliding in the pocket, I would tell you, is, you know, as good as the all-time greats. You know, it's it's up there with anybody. I mean, Rodgers is the all-time great in the pocket, mm. but Brady is up there with the Dan Marinos and, and the Rodgers and all of that discussion. He's amazing and having feel and sliding and staying in a throwing position. His arm talent, Tom Brady, it does not get enough credit. Tom Brady's arm talent, playing in New England, playing in Buffalo the other night, throwing piss missiles through the, the wind. one across the field to Edelman. Was a rocket, right? That was a rocket. I remember that one, and I was like, like wow, whoa, that spun. Right. Like, you know, again, I've caught balls for Tom Brady in practice. Tom Brady can really throw that M effort. He really can. It's, it's impressive what he can do. And yeah. – that's another thing I think gets undervalued about Brady. I really do. I think it's one of the all-time great arms. You know, it's not Rodgers' arms because Rodgers is the greatest arm ever. And as you heard and Tom Brady said on the radio station this week, he said it's the greatest arm he's ever seen. Or, His ability to throw the football is unlike anyone in the history of the league. Yes. It's awesome to watch. Right. So, uh, you know, again, it's just uh, – it's a fascinating – it's going to be a fascinating game – but you're going to see one guy who's 41, and nobody's done it better longer than Tom Brady. That is that, no, that is undeniable. You never take that away from him. That is for sure. But you're going to see one guy that Brady is great, and they're going to execute offense, and he's going to make some big throws. But then you're going to see Green Bay, and it's going to really just be, damn, 12, yeah. make magic. And that's what it's going to be. And so with all that little help, Aaron Rodgers would have to throw zero touchdowns and 29 straight interceptions for Brady to have the same touchdown interception ratio. Wow. That's amazing. That's almost as good as your Hugh Jackson, Bill Belichick stat. Say that one too. Was, well, you, you know, that was actually wrong. Completely right? incorrect. 400 games off. It was like, it's like 877. Like Belichick would have to lose 877. Okay. Games. It still gets the point. The funniest thing you is. You said 1,177. Someone put it online and I went with it. Oh my gosh. Abington friends way high school. Jeez. All right. The, my favorite thing though, about Belichick talking about Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I really wish we could st- Print out the transcript from four years ago. Is this it? Oh, no. This is from what he this said. This is today because four so years someone, ago was amazing. I will never forget that moment. So someone, I guess, asked about comparing Aaron, Aaron and Tom. I'm only going to read you the first paragraph in where Belichick talked up Tom in order to probably make him feel better and not just gloat about Rodgers. Because this is what he did in the mass matchup. When they went to Green Bay, he was asked the same question. And he kind of was like... He didn't take any, he didn't do disrespect, but he kind of tried to say like, no, this is like, this is a different animal we're playing here, guys. Quote, I've never played against Tom Brady, so I'm glad he's our quarterback. He's a great quarterback. He's won a lot of games for us. Hopefully he'll win a lot more. We've won a, won a lot of games because of him, but I've never played against Tom Brady. So this is a different context. Doesn't talk about his physical ability. Does not, just talks about winning games. And then he goes on to talk about Aaron Rodgers. It's as difficult as a game you can play. He's as good as anybody I've ever faced. We've faced a lot of good ones. Just saying this guy is a great player. He can do everything a quarterback needs to do. Throws touchdowns, no interceptions. And then he also says this. He's thrown however many long passes to however many different receivers. It's not all one guy. Like, he knows what he's going up against. He also said Jair Alexander is phenomenal and he wish he could have drafted him, but he wasn't there and they got a great player and he was the top guy on our board, but he was their top guy on their board. He said he was at the top of their board. Yeah. 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 You know, him and Hughes, I, you know, yeah, he's Jair was off the charts last week. Do you guys think that Rogers is the type of guy who's extra juiced for this one? because of how much attention is on it and the Brady Rogers discussion. I mean, they're both going to be extra juiced. I think Ro- Brady would probably be more juiced. Like Rogers has to go into the game going, I got to do it. Like he already has to half that juice because they're a six and 10 team without him. That's and Brady. Really is. Brady cannot have a Drew Brees Sunday night football, Minnesota game. Like they can't win by 10 and he only throws for 120 because that would just perfectly illustrate the matchup. You're right. Right. Brady, Brady in his mind to what you're saying probably feels like he's like, I got to get 300. Yeah. And, and, and really like Brady's has a losing record against what I think like only 
this is one of the he's only he hasn't beat Rodgers has him 1-0 I think Cam Newton has him 2-1 to one, mm. and I think Russell Wilson has him 2-1 to one. those are the only three quarterbacks I think he so I think Tom thinks about those things too to go I'm like sure. how do you not hey, of course I would be I will say this though what's funny about Rodgers is we always say when you're listening to people compliment listen to what they compliment when you're talking about Blake Bortles they talk about the leadership his running ability right. they never mention the arts what they don't mention yeah when people criticize Aaron Rodgers, they criticize his attitude, his relationship with his family. Right. It's always only one Super Bowl. Right. But it's never It's really more like it's a shame that they don't win another one with him. It's not even right. like criticizing. But it. all the criticism, it's not about his play. Yeah. It's about his personality right. and his family relationships. Right. You know, when that you do, says a lot. I think you, you're you know, very good at pointing if that you out. You reverse that, it's interesting from that perspective. Yeah. So I do think though. I do not know if Aaron Rodgers and Bill Belichick would have been able to get along together. Why? I think I in the article was interesting. They were talking about who was um, his coach, Tom Brady, at Michigan. Uh, Lloyd Carr. And apparently he was a super disciplinarian, too. Right. And Tom Brady, I think, is an all-time, is a Hall of Fame coachable player as well. Yeah. We always talk about, you know, Aaron's the kind of guy, and I'm going to get into personality thing, yeah. where... It, I don't. I don't know how he would have taken it. I, I, you, I think you have to look at it as like molding people, right? It's like. So you think if it happened from the beginning? Yeah. Right. And also, I would say right. how much of Aaron Rodgers' mentality is because he played under Favre for four years. Sure. He had to learn some of Favre's it, traits. It's the element of the organization. Their organization for, you know, twenty-five years now has been, hey, great quarterback. You're on a pedestal. Mm. Carry us. And that's what he's known. That's all Nature he's known. Nature versus nurture. Right. And Brady, uh, it's not a disrespect, but he comes in and they just go, quarterback, shut up and listen to what we tell you to do. And it's just a different type of thing. And you learn to go, okay, let's step in line. Damn, when I listen to coach, we, we win. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And I think that's that's where I would just push back against that notion to a degree. Yeah. So what was gonna, what Bleacher gonna Report put out the video last night on Twitter of you guys talking about Brady versus Rodgers. Right. And then under it, they put a poll, one drive to win the game, who you got, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Oh. 63,000 people voted on Twitter. Wow. 59% went Aaron Rodgers. Wow. 41% Tom Brady. Wow. So yeah, like, I would still take Tom Brady for one drive. You would. My... As I said in the show, Aaron Rodgers, I feel like I'm watching a moment. Tom Brady, I feel like it's inevitable. Where Tom Brady th with that, I think you're taking the team. Well, of course, so, but how can I evaluate well, Tom Brady? Well, so I'm the just team? saying. So if you put Tom Brady behind some of the Aaron Rodgers offensive lines or receivers, that go, damn that that Aaron Rodgers has had more that pro drive against the Cowboys. Aaron Rodgers has had more Pro Bowlers on his offensive line than Tom Brady. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, then I'll just, just say a system in general. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. Uh, that's you're, the you're thing right is, that. you know, Tom Brady, it's it's a it's a march. Yes, it is. It's 11 plays, a minute and 20, perfectly executed, knowing the time, getting the ball out, timeouts before the ref even looks up. Right. Aaron Rodgers is it's fourth and 17. Right. And I'm going to roll out, do a pirouette, stiff arm a defensive lineman, throw it 60 yards on a line. Which which last drive do I want to watch more? Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Which drive would I feel more confident in? Tom Brady. I know. I still think you're taking the team there. I think you're because they're in fourth and 17 because they ran three plays before that, that Tom Brady goes, we don't run those plays. Those See, are perfect. Tom Brady would know how to get out of those plays. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. It's that's the thing about Tom Brady. It's it's awesome. It's amazing. And he's that's what I was saying with the Derek Jeter thing. The clutch factor is off the charts. The funniest thing about Michael Jordan doing that is literally 10 minutes before in my other group chat, I, we were doing NBA comparisons for NFL players, which right. I'd love to bring to this podcast one time. And I said, really, Brady is Jordan and LeBron is Aaron Rodgers. LeBron's had to do it by himself. He does not have all the rings. Tom Brady has all the hardware, just like Michael Jordan, but he also had Phil Jackson and a great supporting staff that you can kind of give some of it to. That was the combination right yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, when you make it that way, I understand that, yeah. Yeah. And I said Kobe's Peyton. Kobe's Peyton. Yeah. Asshole, allegations off the field. Uh, uh, you know, uh, he's played for a few different coaches, diff two different eras. Uh, the first, like, he was – 
uh, not as important the first time. Yeah, stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's, those are fun conversations to have. They yeah. are Ro- fun. Rogers, Elway, Brady is your top three all time. No, yeah. sorry, Kobe is Ben Roethlisberger. I apologize. Oh, okay, okay, that's, that's even. Better. That was my real one. Rogers, Elway, Brady. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's very close. But yep. Elway to me is in that that Rogers category of physical ability. Yeah, where it just was like, gosh. Man, that 86 Giants, they dial up all the right defenses in the first half of that Super Bowl game. It didn't matter because John just said, well, I'll just run over here. I can outrun uh, Lawrence Taylor to the edge, and then I'm going to spot up and throw a 60-yard missile down the field and screw your cover two or whatever else, Bill Belichick. You can't stop me. And that's mm-hmm. – that's you know, I put a lot into that. You know I do. Uh, I said that Elway is either Wilt or Shaq. Wilt or Shaq. Just like a physical dominance, like – it's it's always in there. Like Shaq, you could always argue is the best NBA player that ever lived because yeah, you go one right? on one, he would dominate you. Like he was the most dominant. Right. That was Elway. Yeah. That, I mean, he was he was amazing. All right. yeah. Well, well, that seems, seems like a good off season. That topic. is a good off season topic. Elway excited. is like freakishly strong. That's the only the only thing I would always come back to. Like Elway's a big, thick guy. He's he's uh, you know a 350 pound power cleaner. Like Rogers or Brady ain't doing that. No, 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 There's no. like the weight's going to pick them up before they, you've pick been in the up. weight room with John Elway. Well, I just know the stories, but through the Shanahan's through being through Bill Romanowski back in the day. Cause he used to come train down at Texas with a track coach and do all that. And he would tell all these stories about what a freak John Elway was. And yeah, that's, that's crazy stuff. One quarterback that we saw get disrespected after his performance. And it kind of took us off guard. And I want to be a little delicate about this is Kirk cousins. Yeah. Um, our friend, our colleague, Mike Freeman works mm-hmm. at Bleacher Report. I like his work. He came out and he wrote an article saying that the Vikings made an $84 million mistake. Yeah. And I saw the headline and said, man, those headline makers, they took his work out of context. And then I read the article. And it was like talking about how Kirk Cousins is like an average quarterback. And Sunday was a perfect example of how he's bad. The interception of Stefan, uh, he was trying to find Stefan Diggs, was taken back to the house. I'm going to be honest, and, and, and I mean this with all due respect, I couldn't agree more with the entire piece. Um, disagree more. I disagree more with the entire piece. Uh, Kirk Cousins is playing phenomenal right now. Kirk Cousins, in my mind, is a top 10 quarterback in this league. I agree. And and I I get upset because... I don't want people to even think that that could be true because no, I feel like it's completely false. It is false. And uh, we need to correct that narrative. You know, I think the big thing is, first of all, I know that play. Why do we do this with Kirk Cousins? I, I, because it's just, it's the narrative that was started, started at the beginning in Washington started fan that always like fan the flame there with that discussion. Cause I always take it back to the fact that he kind of ended the dream child's chances. The guy they looked RG3. at like, right. RG three. And we got our guy. And he was the thorn in the side that kind of ruined this dream of what could have been, which is not true. RG3 ruined that, everybody. But the the thing I think I would push back with that and that notion, first of all, is uh, I know the play he threw the interception on. Yes. Okay? The interception, 72X shallow cross. It's a staple of the West Coast offense. I could tell you the reads, what you do, everything about it. Stefan Diggs was at fault in the interception. He has admitted it already. He's not supposed to stop running. It's man-to-man. It's a shallow cross. You don't stop and sit up in a zone on a shallow cross just for everyone out there to teach you. So, yes, uh, th- there was an interception. And, and Mike's take on that was you still shouldn't have thrown it. And it's like, that's not, a, that's you know, not that's real. That's just not fair. That's it's just not fair to say, oh, you still shouldn't have thrown it? Well, if he kept running, it would have been a completion. I don't know what to say. You know, there's the fourth and one that they go for. You know, Mike Zimmer messes up that play call in the third quarter. Damn, he threw the ball down the middle of the Laquan Treadwell, and he dropped it, right? I mean, damn, so now he's got to catch the ball, too. But so that's the thing I don't like about it. And everyone, I think, is just going, well, Minnesota last year was 13-3, and three, and they've already lost three games this year. So they're not as good. And it's because of Kirk Cousins. They just look at the biggest name on the roster, and they go, that's why. That's the reason. How about the offensive line has been in shambles? How about their run game isn't as good? How about John D. Filippo is not as good as offense coordinator as Pat Shermer? How about, like, they're winning games because of Kirk Cousins? Or tying Green Bay with a 22-point fourth quarter because he makes unbelievable throws. Or the win in Philadelphia because of unbelievable throws. Or the win in New York with unbelievable throws. And yet there he is marching them, and they're surgical as hell, and it's 13-10, to 10 and Adam Thielen fumbles. And we're going to go back and go, Kirk Cousins lost the game. I just... 
that to me blows my mind. Yeah. I am totally with you. He is one of the 10 best quarterbacks in football. And uh, yeah, that was frustrating because yeah, not only him, but there was a few people I, I heard that kind of talked with this week. Yeah, I, I don't. There's some guys that I feel like we overinflate automatically whenever they do something, and there are certain guys that we always minimize what they do. Yeah, Cam is one of those guys. Kirk Cousins is one of those guys. I think Russell Wilson is one of those guys. Yeah, I do too. Guys that do great things, and we only talk about their negatives, and for some reason give credit to the team the franchise when they do stuff right doesn't make sense yeah. uh one person that's been getting very attacked lately has been jalen ramsey mm. a lot of people saying you used to talk and now you don't talk oh they're attacking about it huh yeah it's what always happens yeah. well i don't know how it happened i do know it's because of old spice we got jalen ramsey on the podcast a little 10 15 minute interview yeah and apparently jalen ramsey knows who we are he likes us and sims even Talk to him about Blake Bortles. So enjoy. The legend has arrived. <laughs> What's up, fellas? You guys doing all right? You doing all right, man? <sighs> yeah, I am. I am. All right. We're going to have fun, all right? All right, cool. We, we want to ask you all that. We yeah, want... I'm tired of seeing all these people. Wait, making you said you, you all you you always do. You you say like you know us. You've seen us before. <laughs> I have. I have. Ah, I don't believe you. Me like you more. <laughs> We've already started. Go ahead, give them the intro. All right, I got to give the intro. We are joined by the most beautiful quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> when I say beautiful, I mean he'll shut you down. He'll talk in your face, and then he'll spin the ball in the end zone and say, "Get out of my face!" I'm Jay. Jalen Ramsey, and we have Jalen Ramsey because of who? Old Spice Foamer, a foaming body wash that lathers in a flash. Upgrade your shower experience with Old Spice yeah. Foamer from your local Walmart. Sims, I use the foam. Oh, I like it. You know, I mean, and he really is handsome. I mean, he fits my, you know, superstar corners can only be handsome. Mold, yeah, Jalen, so. Sims has a theory that, that most great players in the NFL are attractive. Do you agree? Uh, I I don't know. I think I am. So yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> all right, all right. So we we've talked you up for so long, and it's been fun yeah. to watch the national media and all the fans go, "Man, I love this guy." Even from the draft coming out of Florida State, Sims was obsessed with you. Yeah, obsessed with you. In fact, this is the first <laughs> place I want to go. Okay, Jalen, you are the best corner in football. I don't question that one bit. Who is number two? And you can't, and you cannot answer AJ Bouye. That is not an acceptable answer. No, nope. because he, we, we do think he's number two. We so. think he's number That's two, but fair. we want to know other than AJ Bouye. Yeah, who's the so next? So, how about this? Jalen Ramsey's one, AJ Bouye's two. Who's, who's three? number three? Um, man, I would have to say, I guess I would have to say the legend, Pat Pete. That's who I thought he was going to say. Okay. I mouthed it. Yeah. If you look at the video, I said, he's got the speed. He's got complete punt return. Did you study him at all? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was one of my idols uh, growing up, especially like in high school. Uh, I wore number seven in high school because of him at LSU. Damn. That's awesome. And now you're in the league with him. That's really cool. Yeah. Where do you yeah. want to go next, Sims? Well, I mean, uh, the next thing I always like to go with Jalen Ramsey is like toughest receiver he's had to defend so far in your NFL career. Like, mm -hmm. who was the one guy you said, damn, after the game was over? Like, that guy was a handful. Um, I know my, we're, uh, we're putting you on the spot today. Yeah, yeah, this is this is tough. Um, you want me to read you some names just to throw them out there? Just to keep it fresh here? I want him to say Tyreek Hill. Yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> okay. Well, of course, there is Tyreek Hill, which I uh, apparently think he's better than you do after your comments a few weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> uh, but DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Mike Evans, you know, you got Devontae Adams. Antonio I think. Brown. Antonio Brown, of course. Yes. Yeah. Odell. Odell. It's a beast. Yes. All of them. All of them. Uh, it's, it's hard to pick one, honestly. Um, I would have to say uh, – D hop or um Antonio just because I've I mean I played D hop what what is it it's been Tons. five times now. Yeah. Um I've I played Antonio twice. Um even in my one matchup against Odell this year, it was a tough matchup. Right. Uh, really good matchup. Um so yeah, I guess I would say those three guys just because of uh my play history. your history player. with them. Well yeah, you talk about history. Hopkins, you saw Hopkins got a new running mate today. Demarius oh, Thomas. Man, did I see that? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> First thoughts. They just what do you, got what another you weapon. Um, right. Yeah, I was I'm like, man, they just got another weapon. Uh, 
trying to make it hard on us over here. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Uh, already have a great quarterback, in my opinion, Deshaun. Now he has, sure. you know, weapons on weapons. D-Hop, um, you know, Will Fuller went down for him. Hope right. he can recover well. But then they just went and got him. So, I mean, it's crazy. What What is it, you know, you talked about Watson, and I know you got to play Mahomes early in the year. Like, you mm-hmm. know, what what are the, they're the two best young quarterbacks in the sport right now, and we could throw Carson Wentz probably in that conversation. You know, what, what yeah. was kind of unique about all three preparing for them and playing against them on the field? Um, All of them are, you know, they can make big plays, honestly whether it's throwing uh, or running, um, they're just playmakers in, right. in every sense of what the word means. That's who they are. They're playmakers. They're good leaders for their team. Um, and they have all, they were all tough opponents. Who would you take of the three right now, Mahomes, Watson, or Wentz? Oof, man. Uh, that's, that's tough. A, that I've actually is. never thought of this question. I've actually until never right have that's either because they're all awesome. Yeah. Um, I would go Mahomes right now. I think I would. Uh, I think man. I would too. And you're not wrong. We're not trying to make yeah, this. None like of the answers we know are wrong. None are wrong. These tough. are all, these are all awesome. I'm going Mahomes. This is tough. Um, you know, left goes a huge Eagles fan too, Ramsey. Yeah, sorry. Just about so that. you know. So I mean, he his last week was the first time he ever rooted against you. Just so you first know, first time ever. Man, um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I would probably go with Deshaun. Mm. Uh, just because. I mean, in my my career playing against him has dated back to college. And, sure, yeah. Uh, so I I really like his game. Man, and it seems like it's starting to click. I picked, no offense, I picked the Houston Texans to go to the Super Bowl. I didn't pick the Jaguars, but I'm feeling really good about it right now. Yeah, we'll beat your ass later, Lefko. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, Next Jaylen. time Jalen's here in New York, we're so going to beat Jaylen, your ass. So, Jalen, I am someone that studies the game, but I also study the way that people cover the game. And I've been fascinated with watching how your relationship with the media is, like, evolving and changing all the time. You go from a guy yeah. that, that it's, like, little clips from the locker room, and then all of a sudden, like, there's these big GQ exposés, and everyone's <laughs> hanging on your last word. And then, like, during this losing streak, everyone's, like, ganging up on you all of a sudden. And, like feeling like now they can take their chance to come at you. And they're all asking you one question right now. And that question is, how do you fix it? And you're going, why am I the only player in the NFL that has to come up with on the top of my (laughs) head, a two minute answer on how to fix a team when it's a team sport with coaches. I have a, I have an answer that you can give. And okay. So Sims and I have been talking about this for a long time about defensive schemes in the NFL, and there's one scheme that a lot of teams are running right now. The Seattle scheme that you guys are running that Gus Bradley ran, and how know, many other teams right. run it, Sims? Gosh, there's uh, probably about eleven, st- about eight, eight or nine right now that are running that same defensive scheme. And Sims, you've always said Jacksonville has the dogs right. to do more man to man and mix it up a little bit. Yes, right. And that's my solution. That's actually Sims' a solution. I just stole. That's it. okay. It's you're allowed to. <laughs> but I, I'm curious. Do you I'm, feel the same way that like, man, maybe we need to change it up more? Maybe people are used to this scheme so much. I mean, am I off base there? Have you ever thought about that? We just um, want to hear you talk about it. Uh, I've never really thought that, to be honest. I, I think um, when it comes down to it, to be honest, it just it's executing it. I think it's a good scheme. I think we have a good defensive scheme, but we have to go out there and execute it. Um, when 10 are doing it right and then maybe one's doing it wrong, that can mess up the whole play. So we all really have to be on the same um, accord as one out there playing as one. And and it'll work. It'll work out. Um, I'm very optimistic about what we have Me left too. for the season. We have eight games left, so I know we can um, we can turn this thing around and, oh, and be where we want to be. Jalen, no you're going to. Like, if you were a stock right now, I'm buying Jacksonville stock yeah, because yeah. everyone everyone's jumping on you guys right now. Uh, you guys are going to come out after this by a team on a mission. Poor Andrew Luck. Yeah, that, like, I, I really feel bad <laughs> for all the quarterbacks that are going to play you guys with all this momentum. Speaking of quarterbacks, uh, Jalen, I don't know if you know the guy I'm sitting next to. All of the Bortles nonsense, <laughs> yeah. he gets kind of the credit for because he said Bortles was the 70th best quarterback in the NFL. And I was curious if yeah, there was – I remember. Any, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say to Chris? Uh, I would just strongly disagree, but that's it. 
Okay, that was a good answer. That's all right. I was getting, I wanted more. I was getting ready for worse. I thought you were gonna call me like some <laughs> dumb MF or something like that. Nah. Well, yeah. Okay. You know, you know. I, I How do you handle everyone talking shit about a player that you have to defend because he's on your team? Not saying that he's not warranted, but like it puts you guys in a weird spot. Um. Yeah. I mean, media, media, and answering media questions isn't always the easiest thing to do. But you have to. Uh, you have to, and you have to do it as professionally as you can, or you can, um, you know, kind of not talk. But then, I mean, really, it's it's whatever take you want to take. People have their opinion. Uh, if you talk, if you don't talk, if you give insight, if you don't give insight. But at the end of the day, I just want all my teammates to know I support them at the end exactly. of the day. Um, well done. So- well I done. I don't really care about anything else. <laughs> no, you can't. I mean, that's how you got to Damn this level. Damn you for that good answer. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> uh, my, my other thing for you, Jalen, is are you guys sitting there looking at Leonard going, man, when we come out of this bye, we, we're excited to have you back on the field? <laughs> yeah, we all are for sure. Um, we know, uh, first and foremost, he had to get healthy. Um, and we didn't want to, you know, rush him back uh, possibly again and, have him re re injure himself or anything like that because we know uh when he is in there and he's at full go uh he's dangerous and uh we would we would love to have that man i would love to see him back uh, and we'll let you go because we know you got to go here but i want to ask one more thing because i mean first of all you're one of my favorite teams to watch and that's kind of why i hated on blake bortles for a little bit because i see the greatness on your roster you have more super freaks and guys that I got man crushes on, on your football team than any other team in football. But I want to know from your point of view, who is the freakiest guy on your football team as an athlete? Or you just look at and go, wow. Um, I mean, you got John coffee and Calais Campbell. You got miles, Jack, you got all these freaks, man, that I just, I'm amazed by. Um, man, that's yeah. tough. I know. I, so that's why we're Sibs and Lefko. That's why we're a big deal at Bleacher Report. We put you on the spot. Um, I don't know, but I'll tell y'all, if we were in the locker room having this conversation, the answer would be me. Yeah, well, yes. I figured that would have been so you. That's, I'm just going to have to go with that. Okay. Never like, a, back down. like a true corner. All right, so on, last question before I, I sign out here. How do you take your steak? My steak, like eating steak? Yeah. Medium well. Yeah. Medium well. All right, so Sims and I are team, like, well done, medium well. Right. And we think that people that yeah, do yeah, medium yeah, rare, yeah. rare rare are kind of crazy. That's nasty. Yeah, right? That's, that's, that's nasty to me. Now yeah. I'm fully confirmed on the medium well bandwagon. Jalen's yeah. on there with yeah. us. All right, so yeah, again. I'm with y'all. I, you're always with us, Jalen. This is, again, compliments of new Old Spice Foamer. Head to Walmart. Check it out. It's a foaming body wash that lathers in a flash. Kick ass. Yeah, rest up. It. Enjoy the week. Uh, I love seeing that video this offseason about you working out with your pops. Uh, yeah. you're, you're a great dude, man, and uh, we wish you all the best. Yeah, we're rooting for you, man. I appreciate it. Be I good, appreciate dude. it. See you. Thanks, Y'all man. got my support. Thanks, hey. man. I genuinely mean what I said to him. I do think the Jaguars are going to be a second-half team this year. I think they're going to come back strong. I think going to London and getting a bye is exactly what the team needed. Yep. I don't like when teams are riding high and hit the bye, but when they are, they need to bounce back and hit the bye, it could change everything. Oh, right. And Leonard Fournette's going to be back healthy. I mean, yeah, I, I would not want to be Andrew Luck and in the Indianapolis Colts after this bye because that – they are, he is going to play a pissed off bunch uh, yeah. and a refocused bunch. That, that, that'll be very interesting. Who is they, your they are very capable of going on a run here. Just look at their next four games. It's at Colts. It's Pittsburgh. Okay, that'll be tough, but we know they, they can play with Pittsburgh. It's at Buffalo, and then it's back to the Colts. Mm. So if they can win all four of these games, and then all of a sudden you go, damn, they're seven and five. You know, watch out for Jacksonville. Then it's the Tennessee Titans the week after that. You know, so they're they're still very much in the thick of this. I'm we not talked, giving up on them. We talked to Jalen an hour and a half before the Dante Fowler trade. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, because yeah, he's Chris said right after uh, he was going to ask if Dante was, Fowler was going to get moved. I really, had, yeah, I had a feeling that, that that he was definitely one of those guys that was on my radar to go mm, Dante Fowler. Guys that were there. coming up on a new contract right. that the team might not right. pay. And like we said, they drafted the first rounder. You asked Jalen Ramsey, who is the biggest freak on the team. Yeah. He said, if I was in the locker room, I'd pick me. <laughs> who would you have picked? I would have picked, picked Miles Jack. 
Ooh, it, it, to me, it would be t- between Ramsey, Jack, and Fournette. Those not the- Calais Campbell. Well, like not it, Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, Calais is like a, a, definitely a freak, but more in the giant size freak kind of way, where these guys are like, you know, Speed could put their, yeah could put the ball between their legs and do a windmill dunk and do stuff like that. That's mm. where I just go like that's crazy. And then they can go, oh, you want us to race in the hundred meter in the Olympics uh, this week? Okay, we'll just line up. We haven't trained for it, and they'd be like in the top five, and you'd be like, what the hell? Like that's what kind of guys they are. So it is week eight, going into week nine, and I thought it's a good chance for us to look back at our awards Ooh. and what we thought was going to happen. And since it's halfway through the year, see how we're doing. Thank you. Captain. Uh, offensive rookie of the year. Sims, you said Saquon Barkley. Do you feel like he's still got a good chance? I do. Who 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 are the other rookies that are like? Well, I said a Denver rookie running back. And oh. Boy, I nailed it. Philip Lindsay. <laughs> That's a good job. I didn't. I said Royce Freeman. I uh, the wrong such one. an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> no, but, uh. but to your point, and I think me and Josh were watching games this Sunday, and we were – thinking about you oh, because you. when philip Lindsay went off i said you know this was actually thursday night i was like sims is really good at identifying running backs in two stages he usually identifies one running back during the draft process that he likes right. and then he identifies another running back after watching preseason and he goes i don't know why this guy wasn't looked at and philip Lindsay was that guy this year yeah and Philip Lindsay right now is sixth in the NFL in rushing mm. behind Gurley, Zeke, Connor, Hunt, and AP. The backs ahead of Lindsay each have 127 carries or more, and Lindsay has 93. Ooh. He's averaging 5.7 yards per carry. Nobody in front of him is averaging over 4.7. Every time Lindsay touches the ball, it's wow. Yeah. Like, even that Denver-Kansas City game, yeah. you want to know another reason why Denver lost? Because – Lindsay had two runs for 20 or more that were both called back for holds. Right. And they don't even think they were holds. Yeah. But Philip Lindsay, every time he touches the ball, Woo. out. Man. He's got a little LaShawn McCoy in him, but it's a but he's faster than LaShawn I, maybe McCoy. Maybe not quite as quick, but a little more fast. It's the shiftiness yes. of LaShawn. And then just a pew. Yeah. It's special. It's a, it's a very technical term. Man, Colorado, you know, I just I look at him. And then, and no, no wonder they snuck up on people. But you know, and just to bring in, just brought another like the Seattle D guy, Tedrick Thompson. Number, th- he's another Colorado guy. Man, number thirty three, Paul Richardson. I mean, yeah, but he, I mean, this Tedrick, Tedrick Thompson, Thompson, he is, he is like, I, I can see why they said, hey, we, we're not that worried if you want to leave Earl or Cam. Mm. This guy is special. Here he will knock Seahawks. your head off. Who are we missing for rookie of the year? Yeah, uh, uh, for well, offense. Before we do that, Aaron Rodgers was just asked about the goat conversation, and he said, quote. He's got five championships. I think that ends the discussion. Uh, see that? What a classy, classy move. guy. That is also, classy move. didn't have to talk about any of his physical traits being better than him. He said, rings. It's rings. It's a great uh, job. Great okay. job. Other, I do think there's a true mutual respect there. Like, no doubt great. about it. Yeah. I that, would hope so. Yeah. Other rookies on offense that were drafted in the first round, Sam Darnold, Quentin Nelson, yeah, like Josh Allen, McGlinchey, Rosen. Uh, DJ Moore is too far behind. Yeah. A lot of centers, Frank was, Ragnow, Billy Price. It was Price. the obvious one, guys. It just was the obvious Calvin one. Calvin Ridley. When you're yeah. that Calvin freaking... Ridley has a chance, but probably not. Yeah. Rashad Penny, Sony Michelle. The Those thing are... that's going to get Saquon is if he goes 1,000 and 1,000, which he has a chance to do. Which you called. Did I call? I yeah. know you said he. You said that you thought he could get 2,000 2, all-purpose right. yards. Right. That's 1,000 and 1,000, yeah. pal. Yeah. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year, you picked Roquan Smith. I picked Minka Fitzpatrick. Mm. Either of them standing out? I don't think they're going to win it, no. I mean, I think that Derwin James would be the first one. Very good one. Right? Um, I, I don't even think Roquan has performed as well as Tremaine Edwards. Edmonds. Edmonds, Edmonds had me. some moments on Monday night. Edmonds has a presence in the middle of the field that is unique. And, and you know what? I would say Darius Leonard is probably the favorite oh, right now. That's that's it. Like that's what I mean. Seventeen I, tackles a game. Right. I, I need to pull up the draft just to look at names real quick. But oh, you got. I don't it. think awesome. it's really worth it. But okay, well, Chubb is going to be in it because Chubb will be in it because he's like seven sacks right now. Right. Top ten. He, he's in the the. He's up there in that conversation. So yeah, I mean. And hey, Jair Alexander, maybe. Dur- yes. Deron Payne's been phenomenal, but they're not going to give that to that guy. So I would think Derwin James. Darius Leonard. Darius Leonard. Hey, Denzel Ward deserves some credit sure. for sure. 
You know, Jair, I feel like, has just come on because he dealt with a, an ankle yes. injury. Or, I mean, a groin injury, excuse right. me. Um, but, yeah, I, I I think those would be the leader in the house. Let me just go to round two just to make sure we're not missing anybody here. Just to make sure. But, yeah, Darius Leonard, man, he is freaking awesome. <laughs> I mean, he really is. I know. I hope he can last for a long time. I hope he can, too. That's I would worry about that. He is going to... He's in a lot of car crashes. And Avante Maddox, the new starting safety for the Eagles, has been fantastic. <laughs> Fumble forcer. Uh, yeah, I think we're right there. Defensive player of the year. You said Miles Garrett. I said Yannick Ngakwe. It's Aaron Donald. Yes. Like, I don't even think it's close. No, it's Aaron Donald. And if Khalil Mack didn't get hurt a few weeks ago, I think it would be just between those two. Yeah. They, they have, in my mind, separated themselves. You believe that Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack are the two best defenders in the NFL, and there's a gap to third. I do. I think there's a gap to third. I, I think they have separated themselves. And, and we haven't seen the real Khalil Mack the last few weeks, but uh, we certainly have seen the real Aaron Donald. That was unbelievable what he did in that game the other day. And, yeah, he's, he's unblockable. And so is Khalil Mack. He's unbelievable, too. But, yeah, they, they are earning what their contracts are and justifying it for sure. How are our F the play up guys doing? You picked Stefan Tuitt, and I picked Fletcher Cox. Yeah, Tuitt has not had the year I would have expected. It's been Fletcher. good, but not great. Fletcher is still – he is still a F the play up king. He is up in that category, yeah. yes. It's just so funny that – we always talk about the best players in the NFL and people debate quarterbacks and all that. And somebody like Fletcher Cox just never gets me mentioned and he's no. always destroying the other no, team. I, mean, I would say Aaron Donald's probably the best after playoff guy this year too. Uh, I would a hundred percent say that left go. I, I think, you know, other guys that if we just wanted to throw into that conversation for F the plays up just the, off the top of my head, you know, Hey, Akeem Hicks in Chicago, man, he pops a lot with F and some plays up. Um, who else? I'm missing another one. You know, JJ Watt, he is either way you either way you want to go defensive player of the year f the play up he does a lot of it too chris jones has had a good year chris jones does have a, a good year no doubt Jadavian about that clowny, f's clowny a lot of play -ups. yep um i feel like i'm missing somebody else but i think those are the main ones that i just look at on a weekly basis and go man that is a lot of disruption there oh you know our guy mike daniels with the green bay packers has his moment demarcus still. lawrence yeah those those type of guys are all up there but uh you know your original thought with with our big man um aaron donald is is correct and then mvp we both picked aaron Rodgers, and yep. i don't think he's winning mvp it's gonna have to be some type of run i think if he didn't hurt it's his Mahomes knee or Gurley right now right now uh, they're a notch above everybody else yeah yeah they're playing a video game and everybody else is playing real life football. Yep. All right. So you ready to dive into your film notebook, Sims? Let's do it. Oh, there, wait, Slugger. really quick. Just some other notes. Deron Payne. Oh, Miles Garrett does have, he's second in football in sacks. Huh? Deron Payne has as many sacks with Washington as he did in three years with Alabama, See? which goes to what you've said about what they ask you to do at Alabama. Got to evaluate what's being asked to, to do of the player. When you evaluate coming out of the draft, you can't just go, well, he never gets to the quarterback. Well, if they're telling him not to get to the quarterback, then, yeah, he's not going to get there. And that's not what his job was. You have to take that into account when you evaluate players. Yeah, I'm just going to rip through these really quick before we Go get to it. the film. Yeah. Uh, this impacts you. Since 1976, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have drafted 25 quarterbacks. Damn. How many of them, of sorry. How many of them have signed a second contract with the team? Technically, I did. Ooh. Because the answer is none. No, I did. I did. I signed a three-year deal. They realized that I had talent, and they gave me a three-year deal. And then what happened? Then why isn't it? I don't know, because I got – that's a good question. I don't know why. Because I wasn't a real free agent, maybe? So I did a three-year deal and then became a restricted free agent and got high-tendered as a first and a third, signed that deal, lost my spleen, signed another deal. Huh. So who did that stat? They need to call yeah. them. You want to you know who did it? They need to self scout themselves. Uh, you can talk to him about it on the radio tomorrow because he wrote an article about it. Florio? Yeah. Did who, he? Who else do you talk to on the radio? Okay, on I will. I will bring yeah. that up. Um, you want, you want another the perfect example right now when someone brings up statistics to you? He brought. He uh, he asked about you today too. That's do you want to know <laughs> the perfect example if you're arguing someone about statistics? Yeah. Eli has more passing yards than Brady. There you go. Right. That's all you need to Come know. Come on. Right now, Eli has more passing errors than Brady. Exactly right. This is a random topic. Yeah. The guy that threw the dildo onto the Buffalo Bills field. Yeah, he got arrested? Caught and charged. Damn. I don't know about Illegal that. Illegal dildo throwing. My thing is, one, it's become a tradition at this point. Right. Do they arrest the squid <gasps> thrower onto the NHL hockey rink for interrupting the game? 
You're probably not. No. Yeah. If he didn't throw a dildo and if he threw a rose, Josh brought this up earlier, would he be charged? No. You don't think so? I don't think so. Like if he threw out like a paper airplane, you charging him? Or is it because of what the object is? I think it's because, and it's truly like, can be dangerous if it hits you. Okay, I guess so. There's a little substance there. Do we know? No, it, there's. You I sure? Don't think it you sure this isn't the same guy that's like this is a tradition? Well, I mean, that we would can't be say that for sure. Yeah, we don't know. I know. I hope. But so. if this guy went to apply for a job mm-hmm. in Buffalo and they said, "Do you have any criminal history?" and he says, "Yes, I do. I was charged with throwing a dildo onto the field." <laughs> do you think that would hurt or help his employment in Buffalo? I, I don't think it's going to hurt it. I think they're going to look at him and be like, you're that guy? Exactly. Right. I think he becomes like a small town celebrity. He's, like a, yeah, he's a hero. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I don't think it's going to hurt him. Because I, I think that guy would rather go, you knew who I just hired? <laughs> Screw his criminal record. <laughs> Dildo guy. <laughs> I mean, I'd hire him. It wouldn't, it wouldn't affect us hiring I do hire love, him, though, that that's that become site. a tradition. Yeah. When New England plays in Buffalo, yes. because they know the cameras are going to be there. Yep. And can you imagine? So you've, you've been around Fred Gadelli. You've been around game directors actors and producers at high level in their meeting like the thursday before they're like all right so we've got all our cameras set up booger you know you're going to come in in that first quarter timeout make sure you hit that read and then i just i need a i need a camera sweep the grounds you know i want to make sure we get if that if that thing comes out i want to make sure that we get it do you think they talked about it well i think they all talk about it like we know it's going to come when is it going to come and they're not going to show and on TV. They're not going to show it. No. We're, they're relying on Getty Images to capture that That's it. picture. Yeah, they're not. It's probably against the contract with the NFL. I and the imagine. other question I have about this is, as someone that's trying to make a meme or a viral moment, when is the best time to throw said object? Do you do it right after a touchdown when there's a lot of activity and maybe try and get in that area? Do you look for a TV timeout in the second quarter? Do you wait for right after Thurman Thomas is inducted until the Ring of Honor when all the spirits are high? He seems like he always waits to when the playing field is down there. Like the picture you showed me, which I saw before, it looked like it was like a timeout or something, but you could see legs of players towards background. that end yeah. zone in the background. The one a year or two ago. That was like after it, the Gronk drop, right? It was right? like Gronk dropped it, and it flew right into the pile. I remember rewinding it on film. <laughs> I just kept sitting and rewinding because like, you could kind of, you could truly see it, and you could see an arm do that, and you were like, <laughs> right. You couldn't tell like what exact guy it was, and I was rewinding, going forward, like, what guy is that? Oh, it's from over in the corner It's like there. the Zapruder film. Right. It's been very funny. For me to watch, also ESPN there lean, was, lean into that Lee kind Harvey of culture. Also did not kill JFK, dude. Just so you know. Well, we know. All right, let's get to your film. Uh, where do you want to start? So the I, big I nuggets want... that you have given me: Bears offense, Seahawks offense, Texans, and am I missing any that you sent to me late? Well, Jags, Jags, Eagles. I sent you the whole game, Jags, Eagles. But I'm curious if there's one that oh. excites you the most that no, you definitely want to get to. No, let's just go through it. Let's just do it. Whatever. All right. I want to start then Bears offense. Yes. And I'm going to ask you questions before I get to your notes. Yep. And I kind of want your notes, to be honest, because I like when you don't have your notes. Okay. Trubisky, can he throw left? Yeah, I don't notice. I don't <laughs> notice that. That does not jump out to me to my naked eye on film. Now, there was some throws to his left that, that, that were a little wobbly. And I wish I, now that I'm thinking about it, I wish I would have t- paid a little more attention to that. But no, I think when I really think about it, he misses equally to both sides. I don't okay. look at it and go, man, the left is really an issue for him. I went and tabulated he Tariq Cohen's left, number. Yeah. Tariq Cohen has like tripled his touchdown since he came on Simpson left go. That's what happens. His rushing yards per carry is up. Right. His receiving yards per catch are up. Uh, and you wrote here in your notes too, Gabriel Miller, Tariq Cohen, explosion, explosion, explosion. Yeah, they those to me are the three guys that they need to focus on getting the ball more than anything. Gabriel needs to be used more in the past game. Tariq Cohen, I think, should get more of the workload as the true runner. And I know that's, you know, Jordan Howard, I think a lot of them. But Tariq Cohen is special for me. He really is. Brian and, Westbrook compared Tariq Cohen to himself. Right. And the, the thing I would say, too, and people go, oh, he's not a big back. You know, 
Okay, but the one thing that Tariq Cohen is phenomenal at, he does not take big hit, big hits. He's so quick and shifty yeah. that nobody ever really hits him square. So I think he can be a little bit more durable uh, than what people are giving him credit for. And then, yeah, Miller, Anthony Miller, the first uh, no, the, the pick this year. What an adjustment on that touchdown catch. He is a really good football player. And Those Gabriel, three guys. I was going to say Gabriel, yeah. two or three times a game, He's a shoelace tackle away from exactly a 70-yard right. touchdown. Exactly right. And there's been a few times a game where I go, you know, why did you throw the guy? Why did you throw? It's mirrored routes. You know, I talk about mirrored routes. Like the outside guys ran all this, the same routes, and then there was a concept inside. And he'll, you know, Trubisky will throw to Bellamy. And I'm just like, no, look at Gabriel there. He's going to catch that. And if he makes that guy miss, he's gone. Just throw it to him. Allen Robinson didn't play in this game. Right. But in your notes, you said that, Two things. Yeah. Taylor Gabriel's the best wide receiver on this team. He is. And that Tariq Cohen is the best player on offense. He is. So even with Allen Robinson. Yes. Allen Robinson is not the Allen Robinson we've seen yet, or uh, seen before the injury and what he was doing in Jacksonville. And Trubisky hasn't proven that he's like a great back shoulder jump ball type thrower yet. So I don't think we've gotten to see Allen Robinson at his full capacity mm. as a Chicago Bear. You wrote. Yeah. The honeymoon is over. Yeah. He just. There's a few talking about Trubisky. Trubisky. I like Trubisky and I'm not giving up on Trubisky. And I think people are still too critical on him, but I will say that the last few weeks, there's a few throws where I just go, damn, you can't miss it. You can't do it. Just can't happen. Not to saying it's going to ruin their team, but I'm saying if they want to get in the playoffs or beat some teams that are equal or maybe even better than them, he's got to make those throws. That game was twenty four to ten. Right. He hits those throws. It's thirty five to 10. exactly. Exactly. That game, right. that game was a one possession game until yeah. the very end, and it didn't need to. Right. Be. And there's even like uh, you know other plays that you would forget in just the minutia of the game where you'd go, man, there was an out route. You got to hit that. That would have kept you. It'd been second and two instead of you know second and ten, and the, and the ripple effect of what that causes. Now added to that though, where do you want to go? No, we're, I was going to go to running. His his running is off the charts. I believe that he arguably is the best mobile quarterback in the NFL right Lefko, now. Lefko, I you know I'm going to pull up the teams, but he's in that discussion. I mean, he's, he's up there every, with Deshaun Watson. He's I would think I think he beats Deshaun Watson in a race. Cam he's Newton. Not, yeah, he's not as physical as a runner, but he's faster runner. than he Cam. He is fast. Like he had a few runs where he turned the corner on Jamal Adams. Like Jamal Adams, that, that's the one where Jamal Adams ran him out of bounds, right. and I felt like I was looking at Jamal, and he was just like, "I didn't think he was that fast." I think that's exactly what happens to a lot of the guys. I do. He is a true threat as a runner. You know, I've always said he's Alex Smith on steroids, right, or whatever. Just saying, he's a more physically impressive Alex Smith. That's what he is, and his running is a real weapon. And I think they need to continue to do it. They had a few design runs for him in the game. And I think they should continue to stop drafting these guys and then not using what you drafted them. Oh, he's a great runner, but we never run him. Well, screw it. Then why'd you draft him number two? You got to do it a little. He knows how to do it. He knows how to protect himself. Mm. So, you know, use that element a little bit more. You know, yeah, he's not as shifty in the natural fluid athlete as Deshaun Watson, but in a straight race, that would be something to see. That's awesome. He's close. The other thing I will say that I took from this game from your notes on the defensive side, yeah. the Jets not having a pass rusher is defining this defense. Yes. I mean, they're also really banged up. Yeah. Like the Jets are having a ton of injuries right now. Yeah. But it was an issue we thought before the year, and yeah. it's continued. It has continued because I think, you know, Todd Bowles becomes uh, – you know, insecure about it at times and goes, damn, I don't want to let the quarterback do it. I think they actually over blitz Lefko because of that. Yes. To where I want to just go, no, you're Todd Bowles. You got good coverage. Let Leonard you're Williams creative. push the pocket. Right. They have those type of guys that can do that. So again, you know, sacks can be overrated in that. And and don't blitz five or blitz six to then give, you know, put your secondary in a very tough spot. I think they do overdo that a little bit, the New York Jets. All right, let's move to Seahawks offense, Detroit defense. I wanted you to watch this. I went through the notes. I don't think there's anything else for that game. Well, I know. I'm just typing. typing. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just going to the next one. Seahawks offense. I, was I didn't going... underline anything in the notes anymore. I'm done underlining. Did you notice that? Why? Because I'm making you read them all. I had a feeling. I felt like lately you are just reading the underlined stuff and not reading everything. I literally everything. spent an hour and a half with Josh this morning right. trying to come up with a new way of getting your notes to me in a way. So, like, <laughs> believe me, I'm thinking about okay. it. Uh, I was curious. Okay, Seahawks jump out 28 points in the first half. Yeah. Is this sustainable? What about the running offense? And the first thing I see in your notes is you comparing David Moore to two really great receivers in the NFL. You do not think this is some, some flash in the pan. No, I do Possibly not. the reason they cut Brandon Marshall this week. Definitely the reason. Who would you compare him to? Um, who did I compare him to? His third line. 
Where is it? Third line. David Moore. B. Oh, Crabtree and Hopkins. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. See, I write too many notes. I can't even think. That's but you why compare I write notes. David Moore to DeAndre Hopkins. He is that type of guy where, you know, he can run by you, and you're not going to sit there and go, oh, that's like what he does, and that's not what DeAndre Hopkins does. But of course, if you man him up, he can run by you. He has enough speed, but his ability to catch the ball with people around him. I've seen enough now to go, man, this is real. This is not. This is another guy. He's 6'2", 220. That's big, strong, physical, broad-shouldered mm. guy that is just – he's overpowering the DBs. You know, Tease Tabor, he did a good job on him a few times. His coverage is there. He just – when the ball is in the air, he can't muscle up with this guy, and that's where he's good. And then, of course, like, like I said, he's got enough speed that you go, damn, I can't just sit on the back shoulder. He will run by you. Mm. He's He is – he is – He's becoming one of Russell's favorite targets. I look at Seattle and how they're running this offense yeah. right now. They're number one in the NFL in rushing in terms of attempts, last in passing. But how they're passing, I really like it. It's big shots off play action. Every pass to Lockett is 25 yards down the field. Right. Every pass to Moore is a 20-yard lob ball. The only one really catching balls underneath is Baldwin. Yeah. And they're not even throwing that ball underneath that much. Not much. It's either huge chunk gains or they're giving it off to Carson. Right. People are going to look at that and go, well, Russell Wilson is the worst passing offense in football and blah, blah, blah. I would argue that the way Russell Wilson has to play is this, it's hard to play that way. And when you Russell go, Wilson I only have incredible this. Deep ball. Oh, my gosh, it's incredible. He made the throws of the weekend. His first touchdown pass running to his left and throwing into the back corner of the end zone right on the money. I mean, that's come on. That's ridiculous. And to play that way, too, again, it's harder sometimes than the guy who gets to throw it 41 times because you drop back and it's usually a big moment to drop back or they're asking you to make a big throw in yes. that moment where, yeah, you're not getting to throw a screen pass. We're asking you to throw the 20-yard in cut over the middle of Doug Baldwin and you got to make it, and he does it. So two big notes from this game from your notes. Yeah. One is about the Seahawks offense, and one is about the Detroit defense. Yeah. The Seahawks offense, you wrote that you don't think that there's a running back in the NFL that runs mm -hmm. harder than Chris Carson, no. and that him and Mike Davis are perfect for this scheme. Right. What are you seeing with Chris Carson? Because I'm sure that you're a little shocked that Rashad Penny's not even getting any reps. I, I am. And, you know, ever since he got hurt in training camp, yeah, he and, and those guys are like, yeah, damn, you want to get hurt? You want to break your finger? Okay, great. We're taking this shit, and you're not getting back on the field. Uh, Chris Carson's the real deal. He's the real deal. Chris Carson is the hardest runner in the sport for me right now. And when I say that, I mean, all guys are running hard. I get that. But this guy's like... It doesn't matter. Oh, I, I'm about to go, you know, head to head with the middle linebacker. My legs are going to keep going and I'm going to go forward and run through the tackle. It is phenomenal. The yards after contact, the collisions he takes and stays on his feet and continues to run. And they're made right for man to man blocking. They're not zone like outside, inside zone guys. They're not making one cut and, and then the flying scene. through no. it. Right. They're not that Tevin Coleman or what, Matt no, Breida. They would rather put their hand on a guard's back. Exactly. Right. And kind of follow him and then right. go, I'll, I'll initiate contact when I need yeah, to. Exactly right. That's exactly right. That's the kind of guys they are. And they're sitting there, and then they can they got great contact balance. So him and Mike Davis are phenomenal that way. And, they're you know, again, as we've been saying here the last few weeks, these teams are very refreshing to watch. I like this style of football. It's old school, smash mouth. They got some big hulks up there on the offensive line. And you and believe that this offensive line, while not great in pass pro, thrives in running projects. thrives thrives they're road graders they really are the big three the big three in the middle i mean it's a good center the three biggest surprises yeah. in the sport right from what we thought preseason to now seattle kansas city and carolina right we had questions about all of their offensive lines yeah and all of their strategies and they've all and they all had a lot of people leaving mm -hmm. and they've all worked out they've all worked out the thing about detroit's defense yeah. they make this trade for snacks they run a bear defense to combat this seattle offense and they're playing ricky jean francois yeah. who weighs how much well i mean he's like a 300 pounder he's somewhere he's he's 313 but he's not snacks he's not snacks he's not a sean robinson and he's not the sean hand and one common theme i see throughout the game is when there was a big run he was in the game, and it was him. And I feel like they caught on maybe in about the third quarter because he started to finally be out of the game less. 
And that's when you start to see Snacks and Ashawn and Hand in so the game. So do you believe that what happened to Detroit on Sunday can be fixed just by changing personnel? Not totally fixed. No, I don't. I think still um, Jared Davis is a good middle linebacker. I think Christian Jones is is not playing up to par. He's a little undersized. He's undersized. He doesn't make a lot of plays. He's he's really kind of goes unnoticed throughout the football game, and that's not a good thing when you're a middle linebacker. You know, whether you're making tackles, great – or, you know, you don't have to make any stats for me, but are you going up into the line of scrimmage and taking on the lead blocker and messing up the play in that capacity? And that's not happening either, let alone some of his run fits. We're definitely off in some of those situations. Do you think Detroit's defense can turn it around? Because <sighs> this is a team that I got really excited about last week. I know. You said found their identity. Yeah. they. I mean, you know, man, I don't know what to think about them. They need Ezekiel Anza. They really need that extra guy because they also get stuck in the maybe blitz a little bit more or too many stunts. You know, Devin Kennard's up there and, you know, sack leader in the NFL. It's like he's got five or six sacks, something like that. But he's not really a great pass rusher. It's doing it through the Patricia scheme. I do think they can get this. I don't know if they're going to ever be a special unit. That might not happen the next year. But with these three big efforts in the middle – they certainly can make it harder on people. All right, so the next game I had you look at was the Texans taking on the Dolphins yep. because the Texans have now won five in a row. Yep. Now they've gotten Demarius Thomas. Yeah. People have stopped talking shit about my Super Bowl picks. I wonder why. Second note here, Watson, you said this earlier, every ball is pure. Pure as hell. I mean, so from the beginning of the year till now, yeah. is Watson comfortable? Yeah, Watson okay. is like... I think this is the first game I watched on film and said Watson is the Watson from last year f officially again. Just some of the moves he made and some of the things he did during the game were, were yeah, amazing. You also surprised me by saying that the O-line has athletes and they're clicking. All I heard about the Texans yeah. was how bad their offensive line was the first few weeks. Right. When they started off 0-3. Right. What has changed? Well, I think that... Is it just because the Dolphins are undersized and don't have guys? Well, that, that certainly helps, but I think this is more than that. This team ran the ball in the Jacksonville Jaguars, too, the week before. You know, I think there is something there. I think they just found the right max match of guys, and that's why I wrote, you know, I think I wrote something like they have the right look, right? They got longer athletic guys at the tackle position uh, with Davenport and Lamb, you know, they're, they're, they're got long arms that they're, they're what you want at the at, at tackle as far as that's concerned. But then the inside three with Kelametti, Colette, Colette, I don't know how to say his name, Colum, whatever it is, Kelametti 65 or 64, then Zach Martin's brother, Nick Martin at center. And then the Manx guy, 65, those are your, you know how I always talk about how you like interior offensive linemen to look, they're yes. explosive, they're stout, they're Built pretty like good athletes, hydrant. right? And that's what I like. So I think they found the right match of guys finally uh, to do what they want to do. You said that you believe that Watson's elusiveness is back. Yes. And that Lamar Miller's vision has been incredible. It's incredible, Lamar, J Lamar Miller. And I don't mean just finding the hole when I say that. You know, a lot of guys can find the hole. What I see that he takes to the next level is he can read beyond the hole. And he reads the linebacker and goes – Okay, there's a hole here, and I could run to it, but that backside linebacker is way overcommitted, and he's going to be in that hole when I get there. So I'm going to cut back and now screw that backside linebacker who thought he was going to beat me to my hole. And that's where it's next-level stuff, and I think that's phenomenal. Do a lot of running backs not do that? Well, no, not all of them have the ability really to, to see it, see it uh, like that. You know, the good ones do. Um, but that's where I look at him always and just go, Ooh, wow. That was like a special, this play was designed to be over here and it's kind of there. And he saw that, man, that guy's way too quick over there. I'm going to stop and replace him and get up the field. Sims with a statement towards the NFL. As we move to the Texans defense, he said, I don't understand why the dolphins went for it on fourth and one on the, in their first drive. And he wrote this new thing for NFL coaches, just be aggressive dash fuck off. Yes. Fuck off. I'm so sick of that. Oh, we were just trying to be aggressive. Okay. Oh, great. But I like the aggressiveness. Well, great. You do. But, you know, it's, you know, it's it just, it's like, it's the new cop out for NFL coaches mm. in the league. You know, oh, we were just trying to be aggressive. And that's exactly what the media guys go. I like aggressive. Hmm. 
They were aggressive, fans. That's let's not get a mad. Let's not get mad at our coach for winning a game. Yeah, tell me how aggressive went for Mike Vrabel in the two point conversion in London. That wasn't aggressive. That was stupid. I don't know other way to say it. You were dominating the second half of the football game. You're the Miami Dolphins. Give your team something positive with Brock Osweiler starting the game on the road on Thursday night against the Houston Texans defense. It's very good. Get the field goal. See if now kick it off and see if they can drive on you. That's just, I'm sick of this. It's this whole yeah. new thing of aggressive, aggressive. It, it found the cop out way. You have been in favor of going for it on fourth downs, but you're saying go for it in smart situations In smart situations like Mike Zimmer, same thing in this, what we talked about this start the second half. Like, okay, I like aggressive. That's stupid. That's not aggressive. That's stupid. I don't know what other way to say it. Aggressive is it's fourth and one in the Super Bowl, and I got Philly Philly. That's aggressive. That's like I planned this out already and played this situation out. It's not just like, we're going, team. I don't know. Oh, our 5-0 linemen are all out of the game, and we got back. We're going aggressive. Yeah, no, okay. The, the real thing is what you're. what I think you're saying is, when Sean Payton goes for it on fourth and one, he brings out a wrinkle. Yes. He doesn't run a simple slant that gets swatted down. Two fake punts or Taysom Hill quarterback. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's what I'm saying. Exactly right. It's been a thought out aggressiveness. These other ones are just aggressive to be aggressive because now they can't say anything bad about me. I, I, you I are know. you are still blown away at the depth of the front seven of the Holy, Texans. Yes. You love the way Kareem Jackson's playing right now. I, I gotta we gotta give him a little respect. Because he started the year at safety. Yes. And now after he's, corner. Right. And then they got a bunch of injuries at Kevin Johnson, all that. They move him back to corner. Right. And he's just he's a phenomenal football player. He's one of those long tenured guys on a team that that fan base has been rooting for him for like eight, ten years yeah. and the national landscape just doesn't discuss Kareem no, Jackson. You're exactly right. Nobody talks about him. He's a first round pick from Alabama who has been really good his whole career and it's not sexy, but he does all the little things. His teams don't go anywhere because his quarterbacks have always right. Sucked. And he's one of the best tackling secondary guys in football. And that's the other thing I like about him. Who's the guy that got hurt that they need to be healthy? Oh, uh, well, Jonathan Joseph. Yes. Yeah, they, they need him. That would be their one issue with that defense cover is just guys. cover guys. They, they need him. They need him and Kareem to stay healthy because they, if they want to mix up man-to-man -man every now and then, they need it. I think uh, one thing that you did right, though, is they're not sound all the time. But because they're so unconventional, yes. it will help them when they're facing really good teams. It will. That's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Because I had the Texans going to the Super Bowl because I think that their offense and defense is very unconventional. When you um, when you play the Texans, you have not played a team like them before. Right. And I think it's whenever I see these good offenses, the Saints, the Patriots, the Chiefs, they tear apart familiar schemes. Yeah. And unfamiliar teams kind of have an advantage. Yes. I, I totally right. And I think so. That's Romeo's the, doing a good job. Romeo is doing a good job, and they have all the pieces of depth at D line, hybrid linebackers that can do it all, and then. They got the Matthews. It could be a, you know, Tyrone Matthew could be a nickel. He could be a safety. Kareem Jackson could be a safety or a corner. So they can do a lot of different things. You know, it's like the Baltimore Ravens. There's a reason they're number one defensive football. They're unconventional. The Washington Redskins at number four, unconventional. Chicago Bears with Vic Fangio. I would border him at number seven. Wade Phillips at number eight, unconventional. Houston Texans number nine, unconventional. They're not afraid to change it up on a weekly basis and go, no, this week we have to play this formation this way, and they haven't seen us play it this way, and it's going to throw this great quarterback for a loop. So how confident are you right now in the Texans um, after watching the film? Are they – for what – what kind of five and three, five game winning streak team are the Texans? Yeah, uh, that's a that's a good question. I, I mean, they are certainly an improved football team where they were from early in the year. You know, the, I think the Texans have big potential. I do. The Will Fuller thing certainly hurt me there, but like they're part of the handful of teams in the AFC where I go, man, you get them in the playoffs and Deshaun Watson's healthy. You're not going to feel comfortable about that group coming to town. Mm. There's no way. I mean, I don't know how you could. So they might not win a lot of games pretty throughout the year all the time, but they're made for playoff football, and they got playmakers on both sides of the ball. I went through your Jacksonville Philly notes, and a lot of it was very similar to what we discussed on Monday, but there's one thing that I really want to focus on, yeah. and the field. Oh, come I on. love when you get upset about playing conditions. I mean, because I watch the game and I don't even think about it. But like, you know what people get upset about? Yeah. 
How dare the LA Coliseum have a USC logo bleeding through to a Rams logo? Who cares? It doesn't impact anything. There's a game in London where the field is torn up, and your theory about five foot eight, 150 pound athletes on a field compared to Fletcher Cox is perfect. I mean, it's what it is, what it is. And LA is embarrassing too. I mean, there was a college game on that field the night before. Why are college athletes playing on better fields than pro NFL athlete players? Why is the athlete from uh, Ohio State or the University of Florida or Georgia or Alabama playing on a better field on a weekly basis than guys who are making millions of dollars and it's their job to support the family? Because of the ruse of college education and the hundreds of thousands of dollars that come in from tens of thousands of kids that are not used on education, they're used on fields. Well, okay, sure, that. Instead and then, of the private and pockets the fact that of the, an owner. Yeah, the private pockets of the owner, which then he tries to get more money and goes, yeah. hey, college team, rent out my stadium so I can screw over some more money from the people of this area. But it was, and, a, bad, it was a bad field, huh? Yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. As soon as you turn on the film, it's the first thing I see. I just go down. What do you see on the film that makes you go, that field sucks? Just choppiness everywhere. It's not turf could, flying in turf the air. Turf flying. You could tell before it even they start the game. I mean, if I pulled it up, you just go, yeah, it just doesn't look pretty. When you see turf going up, yeah. how does that impact the game? You see it with like um, your 34, Bradley or McDougal, whatever. Dexter McDougal. Dexter McDougal slipping a few times or big guys who are trying to hold their ground and their feet give out underneath them. It's things like that. And I just go, it's a joke. I mean, that's another reason like, yo, play your safety, but we're not going to give you a solid footing. They Manchester city played on that field. Like the oh, next day. What was that like? I'll, I went on Twitter and I was like, let me just see people were freaking out. It's embarrassing. They have to play on this. There was just after the Eagles and Jaguars, which is like right. a top five, like dog on dog right. match. Right. Right. The, the, the pitch just had a big brown line right down the middle of the pitch. Yeah. And Manchester City fans were going nuts that they had to play on that. I bet they were. Yeah, welcome to the NFL, Manchester City. Okay? Because these guys got to do it all the time. They're, uh, they're crazed that their 5'9", 140-pound Englishman has to do it, but they're not crazed that Calais Campbell at 6'8", 320, he's doing it. And they're like, oh, who cares? You're big and strong. Like, you know, it's just unbelievable. Sims, there's a very special thing happening tomorrow night, and this is where we're going to end the podcast. Dude, Carson Wentz was so good in that game. Dude. I know. You wrote there like seven. Well, you you said that on Monday, too. Okay, I don't know. That he I was did. incredible and that Cam Newton couldn't do these things and no well, quarterback could do it. was like him anything. and Cam. Like, those are the kind of guys. Like Just with the people around him and the throws. And that's just, again, it goes back to our whole like size is a skill type of thing at the quarterback position. Yeah. He's just a man. Dude. Come on, catches his own pass and gets a first down. That was awesome. Come on, got people around him. You know, you talked about Duck and Calais Campbell. I don't think anyone has a stronger looking base than Carson Wentz. It is. I think when Carson Wentz sticks that foot out, it's it's awesome. I love that guy. He's got no style. That outfit was awful. Yeah. But something special is tomorrow night, Thursday night, tonight, depending on when you listen to this podcast. Your best friend is taking on your former coach. I know. I the game itself. Yeah. Not interested. Yeah. In. C.J. Beathard's probably not going to pay play. I might put a lot of money on the Raiders tomorrow night in our bets. I just don't see – the Raiders at least can score. I would think so. I don't know how the nine – I mean, unless Raheem Mostert – I have no Mostert, idea the spreads, but – Yeah, I don't yeah. want to know either. Yeah. But what do you think this is like for Kyle taking on his former coach too? Yeah. Because he was an assistant. I think it's like – it's always personal to a degree. I don't mean personal in a mean way, but you, you want to beat the guy, just like we talked about with McVay and Gruden. But to me, it goes a notch up because they're fighting in the same city. This is bragging rights. It's it's all of that. And they both it's, stink. And the loser is, is the really the bad loser. team. Exactly. You know, because if the Raiders lose, the Niners can go. Hey, we're not. We're better than the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I still can't believe the 49ers lost. I heard someone say this at the office yesterday. Arizona Cardinals twice. And they were up 15, or they were up 13-3? For both of these teams at this point in the season, a win is a loss, and a loss is a win. Oh, because you're saying for draft picks. For draft picks. I disagree. For team morale? San Francisco needs to continue to learn how to win football games. Yes. That would be my thing. They have to continue to instill this culture. They don't know how to do it, you know, throughout. So that's something that still has to be worked on. I mean, I'm still seeing Arik Armstead celebrating as they're 
the other team's going to drive to win. I'm like, Arik, I don't, I don't need yeah, this right now. That winning culture is not instilled there yet. And the only thing I would push against that, which, I mean, you know, you're not off there. But at the same time, the Niners aren't looking for a quarterback. And I would be, I don't know. I never put it past Gruden. Gruden could, he could draft the kid from Oregon with the first pick of the draft. I don't know. Who the hell knows with John in that department? He might draft the kid from Auburn, keep Derek Carr, and also sign Joe Flacco. I mean, that's what Gruden can do. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like Sorry. I feel like the Niners need to win this more. The Raiders feel like sellers, where the Niners are like in a holding pattern because their quarterback is hurt. Yeah, but do you think either of them whip out some crazy offensive plays? Because beyond the the score of the game, yeah, I'm going to be watching and going, who has the more creative offense? Because this is former Wonderkind versus current Wonderkind. Kyle has the more creative offense. I'll just tell you but that right there. But do you think John's going to whip out some crazy? I, I know. You know. Prime time, I know. Thursday night, Troy Aikman on the call. It's not Gruden's DNA to do trick plays. It really is not. He just wants to beat you with his stuff. He just wants to beat you with his stuff. Now, maybe this week draws it out of him. He is getting into that desperation mode. The last time I remember him pulling a trick play was the game I lost my spleen. We did the flea flicker in that game. <laughs> And uh, we completed it. But, yes, it was uh, – but we were also 0-2. And, and we were like, damn, we need to play because yeah. we're not doing very good. So, uh, you know, I, yeah, it wouldn't shock me, but it's just not normal for him to do that type I of thing. I think we're going to get a high-scoring game. I would think so. I mean, if the Niners – well, the Niners are going to run this for quarterback. I don't, I don't know what to expect with him. Should have been Matt Sims. <laughs> Efficient podcast today. Way to go. Felt good. Good job, team. Yeah. All right. Uh, check out Sims and Lefko, the show, where, of course, we had Brian Westbrook, uh, and I pranked Sims, so you have to check that out. Asshole. And then we're going to do our betting show where one of us is, is winning. in the black. One of us, if you bet. And also, I can teach you how one of our listeners turned $3 into 100 into $400 in just two weeks. I'll explain on the betting show. Sims has no idea what I'm talking about. For Sims. Peace out, homies. Fendrick would say. Good evening, everybody. And for the L-E-F-K-O-E. Man. We will holla, holla, holla at you later. Be well, everybody.